What is up, guys? It's Specto Patronum. We are here for another episode of the Meaning of Podcast, and it is a very special Harry Potter episode, hey. which is why we got a special guest, an Ooh. actual mm. Potter head, because RB3 yeah. and I cannot claim that, even nope. though we are in full props. Hold, hold on a second. I don't want to like completely claim that <laughs> Come I'm like on, a man. Potter head. We, 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 we scoured the world. We, yeah. we searched the wizarding world to okay. find someone who mm. was a fan mm. of Harry Potter. I've read the books. I've seen the movies. And I, we I, find I, I don't want to be... Oh, oh Copster Christian, thank Rubble you. Cabra. Thank you. What's up? Round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. Thank you. What up? Because uh, RB3 and I are not. Na- <laughs> well, I like the movies, but that's kind here's of the thing, though. I don't want to get in that tricky territory where I, I don't want to be in a bubble like all the like because I say I am a fan of thing. If I get shit wrong, it does not mean I I don't know what's yeah. going. I just I like the shit. I don't know everything. I'm not yeah. claiming that I know at all. Mm-hmm. I can't go in the schmo down and be like, yo, I know everything about Harry Potter. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Uh, you know. I can hear the I can hear the comments already. You yeah. should have gone real thin. Yeah. yeah, people people are too much. I like right? it. It's not enough that you can't just like it. You yeah. have to fucking know everything. Yeah. Sorry, I curse. I'm yeah. sorry. I no, will say we, that I there curse. have been times I've stood next to you at the schmo down mm-hmm. and there's some Harry Potter questions and you're like, oh, I knew that one. I knew that one. Like, yeah, but do I give you the actual answer or do I just say I knew that one? <laughs> you just Maybe I'm just it, sometimes man. bullshit. Hey man, just to make me look hey. a little bit cooler. Hey, I love it. I love it. Either okay. way, this I is a franchise that I have been recently introduced to. Uh, I think it was two or three years ago when I first watched the movies for the very oh, first dang. time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you didn't I'll, even see any in theater. Never saw a single wow. one in theater. Okay. Yeah. Never saw a saw... si- single one of these Harry Potter movies in it's theater. Like five of them I did. literally mm-hmm. started watching these movies two years ago, and I just binged them all, and I made like a whole Harry Potter series. Nice. Yeah. I did a Harry Potter party for the last movie for yeah. Deathly Hallows Part 2. Yeah, yeah, I invited you guys. Yeah, I didn't yeah. go. I invited... Oh, uh, sorry. You know who went? <laughs> Cody Holy did. crap! No, Cody didn't go. Uh, <laughs> Cody was going to go. I know he told me he was going to come. But yeah. You know who went? Freaking, uh, what was the homie's name? Jake. Oh, Jake Damon? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Shout I invited, out to Jake. It was his second week at Schmoes. Yeah. And I just was like, I'll, I'll invite him, sure. And I invited him. I didn't expect him to come. And then sure enough, he he's like, hey, what's up, hey. man? I'm here for your Harry Potter party. And I'm like, nice. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah. Jake. Yeah. Shout out to Jake. But it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had like uh, my my now roommate my current roommate but then co-worker mm-hmm. made little golden snitch cake pops uh, oh, yes nice. i dressed yes. up as harry potter yes. which is why i have the freaking glasses and hey. one and, um Who his father should be snape no uh, 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 hot take uh, uh, hot spoilers take. um no i'm kidding <laughs> could be you never know um so yeah it was a fun harry potter party and it was my first time watching the movies and mm-hmm. i just got into them and, and i'll get into why i kind of never saw them originally okay but uh we'll get more into that during the episode either way guys the reason why we're doing this obviously is because fantastic beast the crimes of grindelwald is in theaters and that's about it yeah Yeah. (laughs) grindelwald because it probably won't last too long in theaters at least Mm. not what they wanted because that (laughs) opening weekend man i'm an opening weekend guy dude i'm like oh i didn't make the money bro and then Uh, this this, didn't it make like 300 million or something no i made 62 mil opening weekend uh oh worldwide worldwide Uh, worldwide it was more yeah yeah worldwide it was definitely a lot more either way guys we're gonna get into all that stuff we're gonna get into we'll start out with fantastic beast and then we'll get into the harry potter films we get into our introduction to it we'll get into a little bit more knowledge with the knowledgeable uh, Copster hey. to see more about memory, the books. I mean, there's some shit in the books that I know that are differences, but we'll we'll get the whole what's it, well in the books quotes, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and we'll get into all that. But before we do that, we're gonna read your comments from last week's episode. Oh shit! Where yeah. I grilled RB3. Yeah, just straight up put him to the fire. Before before we read for these illumination com- entertainment. Be- wait, before we read these comments, I have a very big. Counterpoint yes. to, to everything you said to me last week. I was, just, your, I was your, just, main, your main point was that you thought that animated films. This was this was Ace's main point, cops. In, in case you didn't listen, okay. Uh, he he was a little upset that Illumination Entertainment made ki- made films that are targeted to kids mm-hmm. and that just were full of poop jokes and stuff. No, oh. I didn't say that. Or, or I just, said that they were, roll the tape. They had no <laughs> roll the tape. They had no substance. No substance. And then but yeah. then but then you're like, do you do you think a G you think a G rated franchise needs need, need substance to which to actually make zero sense because all of the illumination movies are rated pg oh are they really all Snap. of them every single one of them okay. Parent, parental guidance <laughs> really they didn't yeah, i was guidance. i gave him i gave him like four pg movies and he was like no 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 g rated only yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm like i can i can think you put me in the corner but the pg i checked really Damn. all the minions 
I think I think maybe one Man. of them. I think maybe Singh this is, is like, like big news, bro. Dang. <laughs> looks like the real G is the, right here. The Trump is gonna tweet about this shit, bro. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. Otherwise, I don't care. That was a fun, that was a fun episode. But yeah. the PG, the PG. After I realized that, it does that. make a difference, man. I, I, I think it does. I don't know what, what's your take on this whole oh, thing. I won't like, see anything below an R. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm joking. Um, below an R. No, but uh, 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 I don't know. Like you know, kids movies. I I I don't know even know. Wasn't the last G movie? Was the Grinch G or is that PG? No, I mean freaking Coco was G. Are, are you saying what was the last like, like G rated anime yeah. movie? No, mm-hmm. Coco. Coco was G. Moana. Oh, yeah. Shit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yes. No, I, Moana I, I was, was PG. Just... Moana was PG. Oh, was it? Yeah. There's yeah, like yeah, dead yeah. violence in there. I was I was just saying RB three. The difference between watching Illumination Entertainment and what's the target demographic versus oh, a Disney movie, where yeah. I'm like I can go with my homies to see a Disney movie and it's not weird. Yeah. If I go see Grinchmas by myself or with my homies, it's mm-hmm. kind of weird. Because mm, Illumination yeah, Entertainment doesn't do both audiences. They, yeah, they, they, they just do kids, and that's fine. That's fine. That's I it's mean, totally it, fine. It probably works for them yeah, too. I, I've that never makes been, money. I've never been sold on like a Minions or yeah. Despicable Me or, or anything. I said the same thing last yeah. week. Like even RPG. DreamWorks, right. even DreamWorks tries to be. They're like the wannabe Pixar. That's not saying a bad thing, but you know they they because because they do quality work. But yeah, Illumination is just not. No, I'm cool. I don't. Need I mean, no I don't little. hate them. I don't hate them. I I just thought they had some deep, some deeper meanings in their films that like were <laughs> that they they were saying some things. <laughs> Do you agree with that? Well, again, I I don't even like <laughs> care. Like I don't even remember the last time that I've seen an animated movie in theaters. To be honest with you, it might That's have cool. been. That's cool. It might have been Inside Out, which is not. Oh, uh, Inside Out is great. Yeah. But you you really have to get me. Like the you, it, it's really I really have to be sold on what sure. I'm going to be seeing. Yeah. Like if not, like uh, like even Co- like I missed out on Coco. I, that no might have been. You never saw it. I Coco's did see great. it. I ended oh, okay. up seeing it, yeah. but I ended up seeing it on Blu-ray. It's oh, just, right, right, right. I think right, right. it got to a point where I was like, ah, oh, it passed by. If it's sure. not the opening weekend shit, it went yeah. by me. But I saw it and I cried. Yeah, me like, too. Yeah. That's the other thing, though. I don't I like seeing twice. Pixar movies anymore because I know they mess me up. Yeah. 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 Ever yeah. since Toy Story three, yeah, I've only seen that movie twice. I will never watch it again. Yeah, because that movie messes me up. I, I cry I, every time. I go in like ready now. Like I, I go. I, I told <laughs> yeah. you last week. Yeah. I, I watch animated movies every year with my mom, mm-hmm. and it like it makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you're like crap. I'm watching Moana with my mom, and then yeah. I saw Coco with my mom. Don't see Coco with your mom or and, grandmother. Oh, dude, Jesus. yeah, yeah no, oh, uh, God, And yeah. then uh, and then I'm probably gonna watch uh, 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 Ralph breaks I'll the record, internet. I'll, I'll probably record. cry in Ralph breaks I might the go, internet. Oh no, I, I lied. I saw Incredibles too. Oh okay. Yeah, there you go. but I knew I wasn't like. That's not like. That's not like. I mean. I feel like adults are like going to like yeah, that's watch true. that. They're anymore. not going to kill Jack Jack in the second act. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. that movie sucked anyway. Still. What? Come on, man. Incredibles 2? Dude. Yes. That movie's great. Uh, really? Oh, yeah, we did talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I love Incredibles 2. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I thought it was I fun. Can't, I can't rock with that one at all, man. Oh, man. I, 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 was, very, I was very disappointed. Oh, okay. I was very disappointed. Yeah. Right. Either way, I'll probably watch Ralph Breaks the Internet, then Creed 2. I am going to see I do want to see I'll probably cry in that movie. I was just across the street at the movies, and then like as I'm walking out, there's lines and lines of kids. Seeing this Wreck-It Ralph movie, man. Is that already? Yeah, that's out this weekend. It's coming. It came. It's coming out it's to, gonna tonight be, as for the. It's going to be Creed two. Uh, oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Easy, yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I think it's Creed two. Creed two in today. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was cool. Hey, Stephen Cable cool, Jr. Yeah. USC yeah, really alumni. Cool. Wait, right he on. was here. Yeah, he was here. He was sitting. Oh, no he was sitting right there. I hanged hey, out with. Hey, I'm like looking over here. <laughs> I hanged out with Dolph Lundgren uh, <laughs> yesterday. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and how was uh, that? He was cool. He was he just chilling nice. at the house. He was real nice, man. He was a real nice guy. <laughs> was it a work thing? Yeah, it was. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But uh, that's pretty dope. That's int- I can't Lundgren. lie, man. I I was standing next to him, and I was like, you know what? He ain't even that big. That was yeah. literally the first thought that came into my he's head. He's probably pretty short. He, no, he was he was a tall. He's he's a big, thick dude. Yeah, yeah. But he's not like tall, tall. Or but I didn't feel like he was that tall, man. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm like, I don't know. I just, I feel bigger than I actually. But you can take him. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like I can, could, I could beat him. They're shooting him from high angles in Rocky Four. Did you tell him? I did you tell him? I think Rocky Four is the worst. Rocky of course movie? not. RB three. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I say that? that? <laughs> I just think you should tell people that. Man. <laughs> Over Rocky Five. My friend RB three yes. oh, wow. says Rocky Five is way better than Rocky Four. Ooh, in my that's opinion. a hot take. Yeah, because that's an incorrect take. RB three. <laughs> that's a fact. Also, no? creates the best negative Rocky 100 movie. points for. I agree with that. RB three. Either way, let's get to at least one comment before we. We're off the rails. <laughs> um, Talk about Harry Potter already. I know. I'm going to read it, the <laughs> longest comment on here. 
made by our frequent commenter slash listener, Tony Wagner. Tony Wagner. Tony Wagner. Who calls me out so many times. But <laughs> Damn. Hey, Tony. He's, he's calling us out again, RB3. He Uh-oh. says, uh, his comment is, I never thought an, an Illumination animation episode would happen before an episode dedicated to Kubrick, Scorsese, or the Coten brothers. <laughs> great point. Still, Damn. you guys made some great points on how Illumination tries to make anything special since they're just blinded by the money that they make. The movies that companies such as Pixar and DreamWorks make are not nearly as good as they were many years ago, but it's still dedication and effort uh, that's shown for their movies when it comes to animation and each character design. Unlike them, every aspect in Illumination's film, especially the character setting and plot, feel very lazily designed and structured. Sadly, these eff- uh, effortless films will will keep being made because they never stop making so much money. Also, have you guys seen The Ballad of Buster Scroogs, the new Coen Brothers film? And give me your thoughts if you have. Have you seen that um, movie? It's, a Netflix movie? it's on Netflix, yeah. Hmm. I haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta really sit nope. down for Coen nope. Brothers. So. Either actually, way, man, he's calling out Illumination. He's pretty much agreeing with what I said. <laughs> and looking um, up the filmography of Illumination, I have not seen any of their movies. Really? Yeah. No interest in not seeing Despicable any of them. Not Despicable Me? No, no interest. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Despicable the Me and Rex. Despicable Me and Despicable Me 2 are great movies. Sing, crazy. I saw the trailer and Sing I wanted it. to jump out of, out of a building. Sing is good. Sing is <laughs> decent. <laughs> mm. Man, uh, you know, I ain't giving this a chance. But I do agree. We haven't gotten to Kubrick yet. But we don't want to fuck up got, the episodes. It's so we don't funny. I talked to I talked to I went to Perry's birthday over yeah. the weekend and I talked to Cushing, uh Rachel Cushing. Yeah. And I, I was You didn't get Rachel. You, you should have got Rachel. Right? That's what I said. Or I want Emma. I want Rachel Cushing on, on the show. Those two know and I told Harry her. Potter. Uh, I mean, they know their stuff in general. And but the first thing she says to me, I was like, Oh, what do you what would you like to do? And she's like, Well, I noticed you guys haven't done any classic directors, and I'm like, yes. yo, what is it? You were just trying to say? Now I'm probably going to say that. But, <laughs> but it's true. We haven't really done any. We, yes, we should I would love to. Well, I, I want to. It's your fault, man. It's my fault? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. I really feel like we should take our time and, and really... Uh, and, Prepare and, and, for Yeah, it. yeah, because... Especially for something like Scorsese. Scorsese, Scorsese has like or 26 Hitchcock. movies. It's just so many now, we can do Hitch- now, I do have a plan for Hitchcock, though. Okay. I do have a plan for Hitchcock. I thought you did Kubrick already. You didn't? No, we didn't. No. No. Really? No. Yeah. We've been Kubrick's tough, too, because a lot of people, he has so yeah. many movies before the the ones that most people talk about. And they're oh, all yeah. long, man. Long and black like, that's and white. The, that's the yeah. problem, man. They're yeah. just long. Like, mm-hmm. if they were, like, a good, like, buck 45, I could probably binge them, but... Once you're like yeah. in 250 range, I'm like, Ooh. well, and then the thing is, with I'm Kub- going to bed. Well, Kubrick is hard too, because like, it one film is almost an episode. Like, you could do like an entirety. You know what I mean? So it's Ooh, like, yes. we have to figure <laughs> out. But I think if we, I think, I think for for Hitchcock though, I got I got a pitch for you, Ace. I got a pitch for you. Ooh, I got a pitch for you. You want to pitch it now on could, air? Or sure, on the I mean, Harry could, Potter episode? Uh, no, no, no. But I mean, but shit, man. I got I I my professor uh, at USC, Drew Casper. He's the top. Hitchcock really? expert, bro. The top. You want to have him on the show? Certified from the family. That's pretty a cool. Professor? Uh, it'll, it'll That's probably, cool. It'll, it'll probably be tough to get him on. I'll, I'll probably do like an interview or something. Like we could do an interview and like yeah. cut it in or something like that. Like mm. something like sweet. that. We'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. We'll figure it out, but man. But he's the top Hitchcock guy, yo. Top yeah. Hitchcock guy. Mm. Good deal. Let's read yeah. one more before we move on. Raul Alejandro Mendoza. My man. Hell hell homie, yeah. He says, this is my second favorite episode. Y'all got into some deep ass shit. I completely agree with the underlying problematic racism in some of the films. I'm glad people called him out on it because we should be learning to move on from it love the episode dudes great job as always oh cool thanks man no. i feel like i feel like he can th- those are the kind of comments we'll get because that's kind of how we talk on the episode yeah. <laughs> we're having intelligent conversations as, as we're should. like yo that's some crazy shit and we're like cussing yeah. like every other word yeah. mm-hmm. uh, apologies for all the bad words i guys. like how you read you wrote you uh you read two pro ace comments zero pro rb3 comments what are you, uh, what are you talking about like, no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i was gonna the say child of two you, mom and dad right uh, now give, give me some rb give me at least one rb3 yeah. one man. whose house am i staying no yeah. let's get like, into this week's <laughs> <laughs> I always do that, bro. I'll get you off. Gryffindor. Right when you start doing it. I haven't done it. We can just yet. do it right now, bro. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Uh-oh. Right, easy where you point uh, those things, guys. I know. <laughs> those aren't toys. Come on. Uh, now let's get into this week's episode, which is on the Harry Potter film mm. franchise. Mm. Um, <laughs> we will talk about the Harry Potter films and the reason why we're doing this is because of the new movie that has just come out over the weekend Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grindelwald and I can't lie guys uh, real quick I'll go into it again I really I recently got into these films right. um, growing up as a kid it was Star Wars for me it was yeah. all Star Wars Star Wars Star Wars mm-hmm. Star Wars Star Wars. that's what took over my life my childhood and as a kid I wasn't really allowed to watch the Harry Potter films if yeah. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. um, so I never really got the chance 
parents too. So two years ago, I went on the adventure. I saw the Harry Potter films. I made a whole event about it. I did the party. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can't lie, man. As as a, as someone who doesn't know anything and has not read the books, I love this world. Yeah. I think the wizarding world is so freaking cool. Mm-hmm. I love the freaking Britishness of it. I love how like oh, it's so British. It's so British. Yeah. And it, I love how quirky it is. I love how fun it is. I love how it's ch- it's it's childish while at the same time having some very serious elements yeah. i love the mm-hmm. the themes of it because it's very much a a, a, a metaphor and an allegory yeah. for racism let's just say it mm. i mean a, a lot of it yeah. is about race and class and, yeah. and 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 religion too i say, I religion say a little more well. religion yeah it's it's some really interesting stuff i love this world so the whole spin-off franchise it was when right when i was getting into it fantastic piece was coming out was kind of when i was you know getting into these movies yeah. or at least when they announced that they was coming out so as I watched Fantastic Beasts for the second time, because I can't lie, for the first time I was kind of in and out. Um, <laughs> and by in and out, I mean not really there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But watching Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them the second time around, I genuinely enjoy this movie. I genuinely enjoy that world. Yeah. The New York uh, 1920s flappers like Harry Potter <laughs> wizarding stuff. Flappers? I just, yeah, like kind of that world, the yeah. 20s well, I mean, world. Like, like, yeah, yeah, flappers, like, but the chicks, like, they were like... Kind of, like, yeah. Well, it's that uh, it's yeah. that era. Granted, I didn't see anything past the first, like, 50 oh, minutes or go. so for there the first one. Then why are you talking I, shit, I have, a, I have a real hard time staying awake <laughs> through that movie, but... but dang, it, what I'm trying to say is, one. is I like the ad- the kind of adaptation that J.K. Rowling was trying to do in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find And I actually kind of like Newt. Scamander. He's oh, yeah. probably not he's not my favorite. I, I I probably will say Tina Goldstein is my favorite. Shout oh, out to Tina. Tina. I love yeah. Tina, mm-hmm. man. Freaking what's her face? I don't know. I know the actress name. I forget her name. Blonde lady. She's very but adult. She's, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Great actress. She's great. She was mm-hmm. in Alien Covenant. Um, oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Catherine Wannerstein. Catherine Wannerstein. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about her sister. No, 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 no. Yeah. I put, I put oh, Tina. Jeannie? Everyone liked her sister, but I was like, yeah. Tina, man. Tina's, Tina's my, my yeah. girl, dude. Okay. I love Tina. Yeah, Catherine Wannerstein. She's Catherine great. Waterston is I great. Like I like, what's his face? Jacob. Jacob, uh... The uh, the muggle. The no match. Oh, yeah. Um, the baker. Uh, Dan, um... Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. Dan, get it, get it, get it. Uh, Jacob. No, not Dan. <laughs> I forget his last name, but... but uh, Ackroyd. Hmm? Acro? No. Definitely not Acro. Gosh, it's Dan something. <laughs> uh, either way, I like the characters. I like the world. Fogel. Dan Fogel. Dan Fogel. There you go. I uh, like the world. I liked Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It's not the best yeah. Harry Potter yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. but I really did enjoy it. So going into this movie, I kind of went off that kind of positive vibe. And I guess that's why I came away with probably the most positive take out of anyone I've seen on Twitter so far and anyone yeah, I've seen on Rotten, to- Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. I liked the crimes of Grindelwald, man. Right. I liked it, so I want to go there. to you guys, uh, starting with you, Copster. What do you think of this I, movie? I, I too, I I thought it was fine. You know, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I know that there's like some kind of weird inconsistencies as far as timeline goes. Like that, I didn't really know. Like I didn't pick it out too much. Like oh, you yeah, know, there's like a certain character that pops up. Like oh, that's pretty cool. And then I see on Twitter, I'm like oh, okay, yeah, I guess that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But I mean, J.K. Rowling wrote the script, so what's going on here? That's kind of weird. But are you talking about McDo- McDougal McDonald? Oh well, yeah. If we're gonna spoil shit, I don't know if people. I, mean, really I would imagine if, <laughs> if people, if you're a yeah, Harry I was Potter gonna say fan, if you're watching this episode, then you should have seen. Fantastic yeah, and Beast. if you're like a big Harry Potter fan, you would have probably seen Fantastic. Beast. Yeah, yeah, McGonagall pops up for a very brief scene. And she wasn't even born yet. Yeah, supposedly like eight years before she was actually born, and people were and trying to justify already. it. Yeah, I so. think it's her mother or something, man. They could just be. have the same Yeah, name. it definitely could be. But I mean, you know, you're Robert Butler the third. Yeah. So your dad is Robert Butler plus it's another brother. Like, yeah. It's not it's like, cool. you know what I'm saying? Like parents, it's way too cool. Parents name their Thank names. You. To mm-hmm. their kids, they just passed down their names. Yeah, so that didn't bother me. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I enjoyed it. I think, I think it, there was like some really fun and entertaining yeah. moments throughout it. There's yeah. a couple twists and turns. You're like, oh, I didn't expect that. Sure. Um, yeah, going off the first one, I thought the first one's fine as well. The first, Wh- which I- one do you prefer? Oh, God, no, I kind of toss between the two. I think there's a lot more that happens in Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, some stuff that. That kind of uh, subvert your expectations a little bit. Especially. A lot more important stuff that happens. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's more risk. They obviously tie it into the original series a lot more. Which the thing I actually liked about the first movie is that they didn't hand fist any sort of references. There's a couple of things here and there where he's like, "Oh, we call them muggles," or you know, "I went to 
Hogwarts, the best school, the best wizarding school that there is. But th- it's nothing too much to be like, okay, sure. I get it. This is part of the, it's pretty much it's it's pretty much on its own for yeah, the most part. Whereas the Crimes of Grindelwald, yeah, they, they was should, like I don't even reference know. after reference after so, reference. I mean, there was a big applause when Hogwarts shows, like a huge applause. Like I for, I just yeah. started. I literally said this already, but I just started watching Harry Potter, mm-hmm. and I still got chills when they yeah. when they showed Harry Potter and they played that theme of Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was it's pretty like, good. Oh, yeah. this is so cool, mm-hmm. man. I, I loved would, it. The biggest takeaway I had from the original uh, Fantastic Beast is... Well, my favorite part of that movie is is Colin Farrell. I think he's great oh, in that yeah, movie. He's great. But the fact that uh, they replaced him with Johnny Depp is not my favorite. I was hoping at least at some point in Crimes of Grunewald, like he would pop up. Because like, it could have just been like a... Uh, they could have he could have just drinking Polly G's potion, you know, and and sure. just like you know disguise himself. So like, where's the real Graves? I think yeah. his name was. You yeah. know, have him pop up. That would have been a, a nice little uh, twist in there, but it didn't happen. And you know, Johnny Depp's fine in the movie. He's I fine. don't care, but yeah. Colin Farrell's way better. Yeah, I mean, the movie was a little messy. What did you think, RB three? You just saw it five minutes ago. Yeah, right? five minutes ago. Yeah, came What'd over, walked walked right across the street. You I thought loved, it was fine. Really? Fall asleep in that one too. I didn't fall asleep. Well. Uh, for like five minutes, but it kept it, it held my attention for uh, yeah. a lot, a lot longer. It's very scattered brain. It's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah, scattered. yeah. I but it was one of those things of like I fell asleep and picked back up and mm. kind of didn't know where I was at, but it kind of didn't matter, you know. Like, yeah. And and to to be fair, like I, again, like I I fell asleep to the first one and I, I tried watching again last night and fell asleep again. But the part that always gets me is when they go inside the briefcase in the first one. Oh yeah. And they're inside the world. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then I don't know. After that, it just it just kind of looks great though. The yeah. effects aren't that great. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, mm. I mean, I'm squinting already, so it's like, oh, like my eyes mm. are only getting tighter. Um, but I mean, the second one held my attention for a lot longer, I'd say, and I thought it was fun. Yeah. Um, again, like not seeing the first one, I didn't really fully understand what was like yeah. going on, but it was for what I was watching. It seemed pretty, pretty, pretty good. I'll credit my my lovely girlfriend for this one because she said this after we we got out of the movie. She mm-hmm. said the reason why she likes Harry Potter so much, the, the Harry Potter movies and the books, is that. There are dark elements to it, but it still has this like fluffy kid feeling to mm-hmm. it because the main characters are kids, whereas like Fantastic Beasts, you're following the adults and they're tackling a lot darker themes because you don't really have that sort of uh, kid perspective as sure. you do in the original ha- in the in the Harry Potter series. So she she doesn't really care for that aspect. Like mm. there's some dark shit that like there's some auras in here that just straight up kill people without any like. Nope, nope, that's it. You're just going to, okay, that's how we're going to do it. You're just, they don't even say Ivana Kedavra. They just yeah. wa- whip the wand and they kill him. Yeah. So it's like there's certain things like that that she has issues with. Like, you know, I think, you know, keep keep the kid aspect of it. You know, there's definitely fun moments in it, especially like towards the end when like the big climax is happening and a certain character shifts and you're like, whoa, did not expect it. I liked it because it's a nice change in pace, but she didn't care for it because there was a nice relationship between two people. And so... Um, there, yeah. there was a little. Uh, I know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. and I think that was one of the negative parts of the movie. I yeah. would say you're talking about the relationship between Jacob and what's yeah. your face? What is her name? I'm a Queenie. Uh, Queenie. 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 There you go. Yeah. yeah. Queenie. Like they, they had such. That great... was bizarre. It, it, it Especially was after crazy. the first movie, because the first movie, you're like, I love this couple. Yeah. They're like, I, I like shipped him after two seconds, mm-hmm. and in this one, it's like she's putting spells on him and charms. See, and then I she's like, like that. I, I like that. I... But then she was like, Oh, I'm gonna go with this guy who hates Muggles. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that, mm-hmm. that well, doesn't make any sense. Well, he says he doesn't hate them. He well, doesn't, or he doesn't want to kill them. He doesn't want to kill but, them, but he still hates them. Yeah, like he, uh, uh, Dan Fogel's character Jacob, he would have burned up in that blue faint flame yeah. if he walked through it. That was yeah. bizarre to me because I was like, if you're all about love and you want to love this muggle and you yeah. feel like people aren't progressive, well, not, she literally says the word progressive in this movie, mm-hmm. and well, then she cr- goes with the freaking like Nazi guy. Well, she's yeah. crazy. I mean, I don't think there's any like other explanation. She's just insane. Like, well, I think mean, anybody who puts a spell on somebody to make you fall in love, so, you're so you, insane. So like, you say when she like reads Jacob's mind and he says you're crazy, yes, that's like an actual thing that they're gonna mm-hmm. dive yes. into in the yes. other. She's five actually movies. crazy. He's right. I don't yeah. know why. Like, hey. and uh, see, but that's what. So for me, that that whole shift kind of felt 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 right to me. Um, what didn't feel right to me was the whole thing with Zoe Kravis and... Oh, but, uh, uh, the strange thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, the that, baby switching? Yeah, that felt like... Is that, that where everyone's saying it's like they're retconning shit? With the Lestrange, I didn't look too deep I, into it. I but, don't know. Because I, I know Lestrange, know. obviously, from Bellatrix. But, right, right, right. But yeah. also Bellatrix and, and Sirius Black, I know they're related. So I know that whole family tree is all fucking Yeah, crazy, I mean, they, so. the, the, the Lestrange, the other Lestrange married Malfoy. Lucius Malfoy? Yes. So, uh, Lucius? Yeah, Lucius. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't, Lord. 
I didn't care for that storyline. I also didn't care for like the way they kind of just like bleached out like a lot of like Zoe Kravitz's skin for a lot of it. Like, oh, you think they made her lighter? Oh no, they didn't make her lighter. It was just the way everything was shot. Just like it was oh, all bleached out and and, and washed yeah. out. Hmm. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, y'all could have. I, I wish there was a little more pop, a little more color to it. You know? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I, I I kind of agree with that too. I, I also feel like, I, well, that's like a side thing. But I didn't love the Johnny Depp makeup either. I thought that was a little with much. like the eye and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was just a little. I just didn't. Much. Well, I, even even when we saw him at Comic Con, I was like, "Yo, is this is this really what we're gonna watch a whole movie about?" Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and seeing it on screen is like, "Yeah, this isn't this isn't much better." Uh, mm-hmm. But I don't know. You know what I did like? Jude Law as Albus Dumbledore. Yo, I, I like. I a dug lot. him. Yeah, hot hot Dumbledore. Yeah, hot I, was, Dumbledore, I was on board man. for Dumbledore. Uh, yeah. The way they hyped him up, though, I was like, yeah. "This is cool." It's mm-hmm. like. I mean, I guess I'm going to relate everything to Star Wars just because I love Star Wars, yeah. but it's like hyping up like a great Jedi. You're like, yo, this yeah. Jedi is in his prime. Well, also, he's he's portraying um, Dumbledore from the Harry Potter series, mm-hmm. which I think... Okay, so this, the second Dumbledore, because obviously the, the the guy who played Dumbledore, the first... Uh, what's his name? Yeah. Richard. The, yeah, uh, I don't know his last name. I don't remember his real, real name, but um, he obviously passed away after doing the first two movies, which... Um, hot take? Not hot take? Maybe most people feel about this. The, oh. the first Dumbledore actually gets him a lot more right than the second Dumbledore does. Oh, right. If, okay. if I'm, if I'm going to be the, the, the book kind of guy. Sure. Uh, Dumbledore, that's the one thing that I, I've always taken away from the books is that Dumbledore has always been like a... Uh, how he is in this in those first two movies, he's like, oh, you know, he's kind of like, not like flamboyant, but he has like this certain like, he doesn't have a sternness he's, to him. He's irreverent kind of? Yeah. Irreverence like, to him? Like when the new guy plays him, he's kind of a dick at some points. Like, I always go to the scene in Goblet of Fire, yeah. where he's like, did you put your name in the, like, he didn't do that in the book. He's just like, yo, did you do this? Like, how'd yeah. you do that? You know, like, and there's like a certain way to him. And I felt like Jew Law does that well uh, of the second Dumbledore. And, you know. I thought it was good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I, I, I like the... I find out his name, sorry. I don't know, man. I think Dumbledore is great because he's not, he's not like the pure, holy, righteous wizard. He's much mm. more of like a politician. And I think that's kind of why I like Dumbledore. Yeah. Because he sees certain things and he's able to like move and manipulate oh, certain he's, he's things. He's able to outsmart everybody. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's why uh, my favorite, my second favorite, uh, well, not my second. Well, one of my... I. But I guess it would be my second favorite. Have Blood Prince um, when he dies oh, at the end. Uh, so good. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that was like it was it was sad seeing him go, but it was also like fuck, like he really like play, like he really like set 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 the whole plan in motion. Yeah. All yeah. part of the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I was put your wands up in the air. Put your wands up in the air <laughs> <laughs> for Dumbledore. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, I I just like the the setting of the stage that Jude Law provided for Albus, yeah. of making him like a tricky kind of like kind of like a, a talent scout kind of guy where he's like, yo, Newt has got a lot of talent. I'm going to nurture this mm-hmm. guy. Richard Harris, by the way. Richard R. R. Harris. Harris. There you go. Um, but he's, he's kind of like a talent scout, right? Where he yeah. sees talent inside a kid and he's like, yo, this kid's clutch. I'm yeah. going to help this guy out and then I'm going to wash my hands from it because I'm Albus Dumbledore and this yeah. is what I do. He's, like, why he's he, a politician. That's why he has Harry stay with the, the Dursleys so much, even though they're pieces of shit. He fears the day that Voldemort comes back, and he wants yep. to be away from all of that. So yep. he's trying to protect him. So yeah. he's, he's he's thinking so many steps ahead, and mm-hmm. he's waiting for the inevitable. Even like to his end, like he knows he's going to die. So he has the one person he trusts the most, who we think is a piece of shit Snape. Yeah, but it turns out it's not the case. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just Deep like shit. I just like what the interaction between him and Newt in, in that. That movie. was fun. That, that was, was a lot of fun. Yeah. The, the scene mm-hmm. when they first talked to with the yeah. glove and all mm-hmm. that. I was yeah. like, this is great. The, of course, the glove. Like I, that it's was great. great. It's beautiful. It's great. The card that comes out. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Super freaking. So cool. we all didn't hate uh, Grindelwald then. I didn't hate it. No. Oh, yeah. The movie or, or the character the, or the movie. I didn't hate it, man. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I thought the third act was a little. The whole fire blue dragon. Was was a little like yeah, oh, yeah. it's a little kind of yeah. like you like a yeah. big climactic action scene. It was well, a little. No, I will say I saw an IMAX, yo. Look pretty beautiful. Dope. Really okay. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. An what'd you think of uh? What'd you think of the the? I know we 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 touched on it, but I kind of want to finish it out because of the yeah. whole twist slash thing about the whole. Let's finish out the Lestrange aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what'd you think of the whole Zoe Kravitz Lestrange origin story and then finale because she didn't make it. Um, I didn't care enough to like. Really, you didn't get enough. I didn't get enough from her. I was to really liking care. her, and then I was like, "Oh, they set all that up just mm. to kind of." 
Well, set up see, Theseus and Newt, I guess. Well, see, yeah. I didn't even. Well, I didn't even know. Like they showed the picture at the beginning of the film. Like this is they're gonna get married or whatever. Mm-hmm. And okay, I guess she, she's supposed to survive based on this future thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of confused because, like you said, I guess I guess that is the Lestrange, like Bellatrix Lestrange is. Yeah, I don't know. Is it really? Yeah, yeah I Because I so. just, because, like, I, the whole time I was like, okay, that sounds well, familiar, the, but well, I don't want to, like... if you think about it, though, her dad, her dad is is the Lestrange. He's kind of, like, sleeping around he with is, different He is, so he's people. got, like... Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's not that like... That was weird, too. It like, was a little like, weird. Yeah, it's it, like, oh, you're the kid of the other mother's no yeah like you're talking about the like, rapey aspect yes of it. it's yeah. actual rape he's straight up raping people yeah. like putting spells on if, them if you put a spell on someone to sleep with you that's rape yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah definitely. so definitely. it was definitely. weird i will yeah. say uh the one part that i did like it's it's really dark but is when she tells uh newt's brother or well, she's looking at him and yeah. she says i love you before stepping in the fire yeah but it cuts to both of them yeah and you don't know who she says yeah. it to i'm like fuck that's pretty that's good. good that's really cool that was pretty that's good that's really yeah. really dark and cool but Again, like if she was set up in the first movie, maybe, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like I didn't get yeah, enough. Yeah, it was just it was just yeah. strange that they that she just Le pops strange. in. Le strange, very little strange that she just pops in and exits. I also yeah. thought the whole thing with her brother made no Cre- sense. Credence, the credence aspect of this movie was a little wonky. I can't. Yeah, lie. yeah, and but yeah, even uh, like what he turns out to be. Yeah. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I was hmm. like, oh, maybe that's yeah. where the cool. retconning is. I don't know. Like he has Dumbledore's got another brother or a cousin or some shit. Yeah, because I was thinking like, wait, is he gonna be? Aberforth, but that doesn't make sense because they they talked about because Dumbledore has a brother Aberforth and then he has a sister named Ariana. Yeah, that's and, the and then that's the whole thing that was at the end, right? With uh, no, but that wasn't no, yeah, that wasn't he him. told the story of how the three of them like kind of he, he, the three of them and uh, Grindelwald got into like an altercation and, and then Ariana's death, the oh. sister's death. So yeah. and then that's why Aberforth and and Grif- uh, Grindelwald Albus don't talk to each other, some oh, shit like that. Okay, something like that. But um, they so I, I didn't know what was like go, going that was on. Weird. Aurelius. Uh, Dumbledore mm-hmm. is his name, which mm-hmm. I was like, they're setting up. It's like a a, 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 a fox, the fox, the what do you call it, the the bird? What's the, the bird? The phoenix. The phoenix. There you go, fox. Oh, yeah. that, that's the other one. Yeah. But a, 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 a phoenix goes to a, any Dumbledore yeah. in need, and then a well, phoenix fox comes is his name, right? Yeah, but I don't think that's I don't think that's fox. You don't think that's fox? No, nah, okay. I don't think so. Yeah, it, it was dope. a little odd. I mean, overall, I did enjoy the movie. I think I mainly enjoyed it because of, like, Tina Goldstein and Newt's Commander. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, the whole... And Albus Dumbledore was cool. Right. Grindelwald was a little weird. The Lestrange stuff was a little weird. Yeah. But overall, it's still a fun wizard. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just... I mean, it's a spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. I had fun, man. Yeah. yeah. Some people, like, were, were relating it like this is the, the Star Wars prequels. And, like, I think mm. even that's a low. Like, like, Cody brought up, like, it's more so, like, the Hobbit prequels i'm like yeah, yeah okay because at least they're yeah. like not they're i was not, gonna say i like these more than the hobbit man I, I, oh that's yeah just me. Yeah, yeah for sure I, I i can't stand the hobbit movies but uh, uh yeah, i like i definitely like the hobbit the first hobbit more than the first one of this Ooh. that's just me but then i also think actually i, was, I, I was, never even saw the third hobbit movie so i don't, no, don't i can't really have the i can't oh, man, so, the franchise oh, movie, man, uh, i did like the second hobbit one though the yeah, destination that was dope. small yeah that was dope that was pretty cool but i like this one more than the first one too Huh? Mm-hmm. With Luke Evans, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. With the arrows and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think overall, man, let, let's talk about the Harry let's talk about the Fantastic Beast franchise right mm-hmm. now and where it's at. Because I, I think overall, I can't lie, man. I think I just rewatching these Harry Potter movies, Harry mm-hmm. Potter in general, I think I like these more than Lord of the Rings, man. There's my hot take for the day. Oh. Yeah. You see, you I know, know, I'm, I'm I think not they're a huge, more fun than Lord of the Rings. I'm not and, a, oh well, yeah, yeah right. I will say that. I, I think mean, they're a lot more fun. I, I think Harry Harry is a much more compelling character than than Frodo. That's Oh, are you talking about Harry? Are you talking about I'm talking Harry- about Harry Potter at versus Lord of the Rings. Oh, you okay? You said Fantastic Beast franchise. I'm sorry. Okay, that's my okay. bad. Uh, no, I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. because uh, Lord of, for me, Lord I, of the Rings never stuck with me. Yeah, I, I think me they're, neither. They're obviously well made. Yeah. Uh, but I just I am not gonna sit through them. I would rather sit through all eight of these movies. Sure. And then maybe once in a while maybe Fantastic Beast. But um, I think there's something about the, you, you keep bringing up Star Wars and there's really no mm-hmm. other franchise out there that has been inserted into pop culture like Star Wars and the Harry Potter world. Agreed. Because definitely Lord of the Rings has built a world, but when you I don't know, when you expand it and there's parks after it, there's like the that the, the, there's a, there's that just pop culture element to it mm-hmm. that feels like this feels like I like I would want to live 
in the wizarding world. Yep. I would not want to live in Middle Earth. That's well, right. don't you think? Well, don't you think if there was a more of a push for the commercialization yeah, of like sure. Middle Earth, well, it would probably I, I don't be know, a, a though, more of a staple. I, I just came back from the Wizarding World of Universal Studios. Yeah. Hey. Um, um, and I and I hundred percent agree with mm-hmm. you because I see that 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 charm that mm-hmm. that transportation that that Harry Potter has that it can put you inside this world and make yeah. you feel like you're a part of it and it has houses just like Jedi's have uh, different colors of lightsabers yeah. you get to pick your own wand mm-hmm. and the wand is like having your own it's lightsaber your thing. like yeah. your everything is personalized and it's and mm-hmm. it's for you and it's for your personality it's for your vibe it's it's just you can wear all black you cannot wear all yeah. black. you can be a pro this pro that anti this like i think that world is just so much more interactive than lord of the rings yes. well don't you well uh, no, i could counter to that very easily and say like, like elves? don't you think elves are cool and that's kind of well it. no no i'm not saying like what's cooler now i'm just saying like don't you think that that the fact that it's is so the fact that Star Wars is simple and Harry Potter is simple that it's wands and it's red and blue and it's like houses mm-hmm. that is more they, they they purposely make it that way to make it more accessible to children. So do you yeah. think that yeah. because it has an easier window and easier connection to 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 people that it is, is more accessible You're that you like because, it more because it's catered halfway through to children like 50 50 half children half adults um mm. well, I, I mean i'd say the you first say one children? the first ones the first two are like completely towards children right. i'd say yeah and then you say you because know, because it caters well, more towards children not, not, it's not, a more mainstream property well no i'm saying like the fact that it has like iconic like iconography is like a wand like a house like mm-hmm. a like a like a colors uh, like colors like uh like scarves mm-hmm. like the shit like that but they wear yeah but yeah. then b- because because it has all these objects and you know because these objects are made to appeal to children do you think that just gives it an easier window for a lot of people because for for something like lord of the rings there's not like a lot, a lot of like commercialization. Is, you, can, yeah. you can make a lot. There's yeah, not yeah, a lot yeah. of iconic like. You maybe have the pipe, you know, mm-hmm. from like Gandalf and the hat, but there's not like or mm-hmm. the ring, the ring too. But there's not like a lot of iconic, you know, images that you could take out it's of true. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so. and also keep in mind when she wrote the book, she probably didn't have. She was like J.K. Rowling was just like a nerdy little kid with her stories. Yeah, didn't think it was gonna go anywhere. And then when it finally like launched off, it's like whoa. And I think that commercial success came from the very first movie. And when they saw that this movie did really well, then that's when like okay, we've got something. We've got something on our hands. Yeah. And I'll even go as far as saying this. You want a hot take? Mm. I think the Harry Potter franchise and the series in that world slightly. I don't want to say better. Uh oh. But more interactive, more welcoming. Uh, and to a certain extent, a little bit better than the Star Wars franchise. Movies, um, movies, yeah, I'll say, everything. I'll say definitely Be- say movies. I'll because say here's eight, the thing: eight movies of Harry Potter. Here's better. the thing with the Star Wars movies. George Lucas didn't know what he had either, but also when he the, with that whole series, like the 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 whole first movie of Star Wars was saved in editing because the shoot was a disaster. Yeah. Everything was just a mess. Lucas's cobbled wife. together yeah. and edited the whole thing together and made it what it is. And then the second one came along, the third one came along. It was just those like stories. Now, yeah, he had stuff planned for later on, but those became like farces eventually. Like those became movies just to sell toys. Sure. Whereas Harry Potter, I felt like because there was one person behind it the entire time, J.K. Rowling, it got course, better and better. It got better and better it because did. she is the one that created yeah. this all the way through from beginning to end. She had like there was no plan with Star Wars as far as like we're gonna go. Maybe there was the four, five, six, one, two, and three. There's like that plan. Yeah. But well, I was gonna say that's all Lucas though. Like that's all Lucas. That's all Lucas. Yeah. But how much of it was actually planned? Like you look at the script and the script yeah. for Phantom Menace. He wrote that and he's just like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of they fight here. All right. J.K. Rowling wrote every single one of those books. Those are all her. Yes, yeah. they were adapted to the screenplay and whatnot, but she knew where she was going. She knew where she started and she knew exactly where she was going. And she ended it. I mean, now she's. Bringing, bringing it, it back, back a yeah. little bit, but still, like there was like a sought out plan for it. And I think that's where, like, you look at the Harry Potter franchise. You can look at all those movies; those are all really good, competent movies. Yeah, you may not like one of them; one of them may be not as good as the other. But there's no like embarrassing. Like I, when I was rewatching Chamber of Secrets, my girlfriend, I was like, "There's no like Jar Jar Binks in this entire franchise. There's not like that one character. Maybe like Dobby to a certain extent." But nah, we like Dobby. I mean, it's a bit. See, people yeah. like Dobby. Like, there's not that one character. Like, fuck this fucking character. Was, who's the 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 character in the Hobbit with the shit on his face? Oh, I know you're talking. Remember about that guy yeah, with the rabbits about. and shit? He was like, like yeah. that was annoying as hell. There's not like that one element or 
even like Harry Potter fans, they're like not near. As far as I know, I could this whole episode can change my mind. I can see comments right now about Harry Potter fans being crazy. We average like five comments an okay, episode. Okay, well, so well maybe fine. the Harry Potter fans will come out. But like, yeah. I've, I've never seen that. Like, there's so much toxicity with Star Wars fans sure. because that is such a precious franchise to sure. them. But also, I think you, you you forget the the fact that this franchise in general, just Harry Potter, is so much more vast, and there's so much more to take in. There's so many more important elements being played yeah. throughout you know and not to say yeah. that that's not with star wars but i don't know i think something with and this is me being a huge star wars fan too i like i do like star wars probably a little bit better than harry potter but i don't know there's i like there's yeah. sometimes i go back and forth like maybe i want to be more of a harry potter fan than i want to do star wars you yeah. know yeah i mean oh well, i think i think what's fascinating is that in comparing lord of the rings versus harry potter versus mm. star wars yeah um i think it should be noted that at least harry at least harry potter had eight full movies to like tell True. the story right mm -hmm. as opposed to i mean star wars is really you know it's six movies but it's really three you know what i mean like yeah. it's really one story and three one story another three one story with the lord of the rings and three mm -hmm. one story and another three so it's really like three movies versus three movies versus eight movies yeah uh, to a certain extent which harry potter had that opportunity to really spread out the storytelling and yeah. make it you know it's almost more of a tv show like almost or, or a mini series than like oh. an actual yeah. film f f i mean it's a film franchise but mm. it's you know whereas i feel it's like more episodic yeah it's more it's exactly it's episodic but serialized like every every single movie has its own individual plot and its own individual yeah. storyline yeah. and theme and message with that one through line with the one yeah. through line yeah exactly whereas Lord of the Rings is uh, three movies or three three, three, three hour movies that mm -hmm. are just one story or same thing with, with Star Wars to a certain well, extent well even the original Star Wars because he intended it to be a serial mm -hmm. each one of those movies feels like a serial because they they do connect and obviously right. Empire ends the, the, the one that you're like whoa we, I gotta see the next one but still they're like similar to Indiana Jones they have their own separate adventures with that one through line mm -hmm. but now it's like now that we've like been so embraced with this like everything has to be connected we have canon and we have to do all these things. Now everything has to connect with each other. So like our expectations for those things are so high. So when Snoke gets killed off, you're like, oh, well, well who was he? And people get disappointed <laughs> by it. But it's like right. none of that shit fucking matters. You know, like you pay attention to the know, story. You know what it is too? And this, is, this isn't where I thought the conversation was headed, but who cares? Fuck um, it. It, it's J.K. Rowling, man. It's J.K. Rowling, and it's the franchise that she created, yeah. and it's the purpose in the world of Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is the biggest difference between the Harry Potter fans and mm -hmm. the Star Wars fans. Well, yeah. Because the truth is, a woman made this, and she made it very anti-racism, anti-bigotry, mm -hmm. anti nationalism and, and she's very vocal about it yeah, and she was know. she was very vocal about it before uh you know the the twitter stuff i'm mm. talking about like when she wrote the books yeah like when she wrote the book she was she was talking about you know giving women more opportunities and giving these people more opportunities mm -hmm. and being anti-bigotry and anti-racism and, and i think that aspect of harry potter is so on the nose to the point that i don't think any fan can deny it whereas star wars fans it, it comes from this we talked about star wars for like three hours last time when mm -hmm. we had our episode on mm -hmm. star wars and we talked about how star wars is the same thing man mm -hmm. like george lucas is very anti-nazi yeah. and, oh, yeah. and he's yeah. very progressive and he's mm -hmm. very and he's talking about a lot of things that a lot of star wars fans probably d don't agree with and yeah. the irony that they they identify as like oh it's gonna be this mm -hmm. and the irony that the creator didn't intend for that to be right but he's not quite as on the nose as i feel jk rowling yeah. is but even jk rowling's like writing and the storytelling and even with these movies yeah it's like yeah it's clear what she's telling but it's also not in your face it's not like shoving yeah, she's those... sugarcoating the pill she's yeah definitely sugarcoating. yeah it's sure. like it's it's subtle enough and, it, and it's the the right amount of storytelling because that's the one thing that always drives me it's like the neil blomkamp like we get it. Like as much as I like Elysium, it's like we got a segregation. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's one of the things that I take away from it. Whereas, like I think a lot of people don't think about that when they see Star Wars. They see a lightsaber go up and like, oh, cool, fight each other, you know. But so they forget about the Nazi shit. They forget about like the neo Nazi shit with the new ones and yeah. stuff. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I just feel like Harry Potter has a, 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 the clear reason for Voldemort's and I'm talking about Harry Potter now mm -hmm. Voldemort even Grindelwald's purpose of being evil is the fact that he hates 
other people that are different than him. Yes. He feels superior to mm-hmm. other people. Superior to, uh, like, this is all very clear. The fact that he calls them mudbloods, the fact that... Mm-hmm. They don't... That, pff, they, hey, they, he's easy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? You don't know who's watching this? But the fact that. that he's like... You can't very, say that word. It's very, like, that. it's clearly, yeah. like, defining what this is. It's like this 1960s civil rights movement mm-hmm. for unity and peace against yeah. other people and mm-hmm. it, and it's it, it's very clearly defined as this like nazi type villain mm-hmm. that's what yeah. voldemort is he, he he wants magic people to rule and he sees other other muggles as like less than, than yeah him. all that stuff is very clearly a metaphor towards classism and racism mm-hmm. and all that well i think i think i think for me uh I think for me the racism is a little less. Uh, I obvious. think the racism is the biggest I think, part. To me, I interpret because that they more, talk about the mixture well, of, of the of the two. Well, mm-hmm. which is clearly a, 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 a an analysis of. Well, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's the, not. The mixture I don't think of the, it's of the race. Well, I don't whatever. think it's. I don't think it's racist in the sense of like. I don't think it's racist in the sense of like American racism. I think it's more of a religious zealous kind of thing. It's more of like a Jew Jewish versus uh, Catholicism kind mm. of thing. Mm. That's why I think the whole Nazi thing is is. I think that's why the whole Voldemort being a, a, a Nazi, like not mixing pure blood Aryan race versus Jewish people. Mm. I think that's where it comes from more more of. And I think it's also a very. I think it's very. I think the religious imagery comes for me at least. At least in the production design, right? It's very Catholicism base very like gothic uh thing and that's always been a big issue especially in early london and uh, uh not early on london uh early england mm-hmm. um the whole fight against the church of uh, the catholic church versus the people mm-hmm. and how the catholic church kind of reigned over in superiority over over his over his people and how that overthrow kind of had to happen yeah. um so i mean i see that and i think that's why I think that's why a lot of religious folks are, are kind of like semi triggered by it because the whole idea of witch tra- witchcraft is the antithesis of religion. It is. But this movie, the, this franchise, and the series kind of uses yeah. that to kind of tell tell a, tell a story. But I mean, I think it's a little bit of, of, of race. But I think to me, to me, I read it more as a re- uh, as a religious thing. Um, also, they don't really have a lot of people in color in the in the movie, so I don't. No, so it's, yeah. it's a little harder for me to make the, sure. the the concrete thing of like this is about race. I, but. I, I I insist that it is, especially after watching the movies. I mean, Hermione is supposed to represent that the most. Yeah. I mean, even Both when her she's parents the, are, are muggles. Yeah, and when she goes to the Ministry of Magic and she sees the the statue that has like the people, the slaves mm-hmm. building uh, the the freaking structure Mm -hmm. and it's like built on top of slaves and the muggles are in their rightful place or something like that it's very clearly talking about like slavery and oppression Mm -hmm. and 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 and, uh bigotry and all this type of of attitude towards other people who they feel superior over because they have magic and that makes them superior even with like fantastic beasts like with marriage rights and whatnot that's a fantastic beast i was gonna get to it later but but let's say it now muggles and 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 people with fantastic fantastic beast is very much uh, what i especially re-watching it what i got from fantastic beast is very much very much i don't know if you're gonna agree with me or not or you Mm -hmm. very much like pro lgbt rights yeah it's the idea of the obscurist being literally they define obscurist as like Magic, you're too uh, closeted magic. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. too oppressed and mm-hmm. ashamed to show who you really are. Right. And I was like, you're pretty on the nose with yeah. that. Yeah. Even with Nagini, too. Nagini yeah. is like another example of that, it's too. It's so on the nose. And I'm like, okay, she's talking about when, when children are afraid and they oppress their magic and mm-hmm. they, they, clo- they close off their magic and they make it like away from the people because they fear pu- persecution. I was mm-hmm. like, that's clearly like LGBT yeah. people who are too afraid of of super religious mm. people to judge Maybe, them and persecute them. Whereas, like, with the Harry Potter franchise, like, the anti-bigotry and the anti-racism, this one, she was going for that. Yep. Yeah. That's what I felt. I don't mm-hmm. know if you got the same from Fantastic Beasts. Um, yeah, I got, I got a little bit of that. Um, I also, I mean, yeah, I mean, I still I still think that, I think, I think some of the subtext to it is, uh, outside of just it being an LGBTQ, of course, the environmentalism, is a big part oh, of that's a good oh, the animal rights big too. Part yeah, of yeah, the, yeah, animal. Big yeah. part of the a Fantastic Beast. Um, but for me, I for me the biggest reading I got out of it was the and I, maybe that's what's influencing my Harry Potter like kind of kind of thoughts of like religion. But mm-hmm. to me, the 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 whole religious stuff in Fantastic Beast became super obvious to me because it was like the whole fight versus like nature versus belief, right? Like mm. how 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 how. 
how for a lot of for a, a lot of a lot of history, uh, religion has been actively against science and against like against like protecting animals and mm-hmm. against like protecting wildlife. Yeah. But whereas whereas uh, whereas whereas New Commander is somebody who's who's on the outside trying to mm-hmm. try and get that in. But I mean, I, I definitely not you're making those points. I definitely see like a lot more of the LGBTQ connection. Yeah. I got as it right well, away, too. man. I mean, for me, that's that that's what hit. I was like, yeah. oh, you're talking about magic that you hide away from the world because you're too ashamed and you mm. keep it closeted. I was like, you clearly make it yeah. as a point. But then see, that's also, I mean, that's also what feels a little bit of my like relation of, 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 you know, uh, Ju- Jewish uh, culture with, with uh, the, the idea of Harry Potter and the idea of like having, being, being the same on the outside, but being just slightly different on the inside. Mm. Mm. And that's kind of something that, that, that uh, a lot of Jewish people have to face, uh, especially in, in Europe, especially like during, I don't know, when is Harry Potter actually set, by the way? Set in the 90s? Yeah. 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 So it, was, 90s. it probably wasn't that big of a problem back then, but yeah. it was, it's, there's still like an overwhelming thing that kind of lured over the European nation, I think at least. And that's for me, like when, you know, for me, when, when people say that X Men is about Malcolm X versus Martin Luther King, I've, I've kind of always like semi rejected that as to saying is more about the Jewish struggle of being like white on the outside same as everybody else but like still having a, being oppressed for who you are on the inside and yeah. so I mean that's just how I take it but I mean that I mean but but I mean I, you know but for what Harry Potter is overall trying to say it is like anti-discrimination overall it is and I think that's the unifying no matter how we interpret it through religion or through race or and, through, and I think that's very much clear that's the clearer message mm-hmm. than in my opinion any yeah. fantasy movie Including Lord of the Rings, including Star yeah. Wars. Yeah, I think that the Harry Potter message of anti discrimination, anti bigotry, is bigger than the Star Wars message. It's bigger than the Lord of the Rings message, yeah. which is why my my original point of the Harry Potter fandom, for the most part, people that I've met are mm-hmm. very much like the whole point of Harry Potter is to embrace your weird, yes. embrace your weirdness, yeah. embrace your quirkiness. And yeah. if you're like a mm-hmm. weirdo, who gives a crap? Like Luna mm-hmm. Lovegood doesn't care that oh, she's a yeah. complete weirdo. Yeah, like I love her. Harry, exactly. Well, I love her because she's a freaking weir- weirdo. It's, it's also pretty her. meta that she was like an Uber fan and then she got that gig. And yeah. she like, yeah. wasn't even an actress. Like she's just a huge fan, and they got she got the role. Yeah, and then I mean, she plays the quirkiest character, yeah. you know. Out there. And, it, and it's it's the whole purpose of Harry Potter is to have fun with your own identity. I yeah. guess mm-hmm. is what it is, and it's like embrace your identity, embrace who you are, embrace if you're like a book nor- bird, book nerd like mm-hmm. Hermione, or if you're you feel a little bit lack of confidence like Ron, mm-hmm. or you, all this kind of stuff is about being who you are and, 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 and being confident in who you are. And that's like the biggest message in Harry Potter, yeah. And yeah. which is why it's geared towards children because that's mm-hmm. like the biggest message that J.K. Rowling wants to say to these kids. Yeah. It's right. also just incredible storytelling. Too. It really is. Because it's like 100%. You, you read these, you start to read these books, I think like it's like third or fourth grade level mm-hmm. or something, maybe even younger. I, th- I was somewhere in an elementary yeah. school. I mean, it's supposed to be like Harry Potter's age. Yeah. Right? So like you, you read this book when you're a kid yeah. and you see one thing and then you revisit it later and then you start to pick up on on those messages and it's just like a nice like like a nice way to like realize you know if you grow up or if you grew up with these books and then you reread them again and you start to realize it it just makes the reread even better yeah um which is just it's just great i had right you guys you read the books man i know read those yeah, I read those books, I've, been, I've, been, I've been starting with the audiobooks and they're, they're really easy to fun. read they're mm. pretty fun. really easy to read uh, let's get into a little bit of the films. Yeah. Uh, we'll dabble with a few of them, probably talk about uh, a few of them a little bit more than mm-hmm. others, but let's start out with the first one, man. Yeah. 2001, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Mm-hmm. If you're uh, nasty. If you're a British person. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you guys think of this first one? Starting out with the original Dumbledore, R.I.P. R.I.P. Richard Harris. Uh, yeah. That was his name. I don't remember. I already forgot. I think yeah, it was Richard Harris. Harris. Yeah. Uh, Chris Columbus Chris directed. Columbus. John yeah. Williams. Wonderful score. It, it's that amazing. That great, man. It's so freaking iconic. So good. Yeah, it's really, really good. I think it's a strong... I mean, look, you look back on it now, and it's obviously very kid-friendly. The first mm-hmm. two are kid-friendly. You're going to get that with... Uh, Chris Columbus, which, by the way, who also directed Home Alone, there's a part in the score where it sounds just like freaking Home really? Alone. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm, a lot of a lot great. of a lot of John Williams, like a lot of composers, reuse a lot of their own stuff and they tweak yeah. it just barely. So I hear a lot of Home Alone and Harry Potter in the same. But um, mm. it's an it's a perfect perfect introduction to everything, to, especially when you have your main character that knows none of this stuff. You use him as the catalyst to introduce 
all of these different aspects of this world Mm -hmm. without feeling to like okay what's this what's this what's this like it doesn't it doesn't beat you over the head because you're constantly learning but it's not uh, it's not overwhelming it's pretty straightforward it's it's a wizarding world there's yeah. some weird things about it and eventually you just like accept them for what they are and it's more about the relationship too of 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 how Harry Potter feels as like an orphan, right? Yeah. Living with a family that he doesn't feel is his own, mm-hmm. feeling neglected, living in the basement. That kind of mm-hmm. stuff is really what stands out the most to me in this movie. And then going to Hogwarts where he's able to have fun, yeah. live his life, mm-hmm. learn all these spells, and yeah. be like the special kid that he always thought he could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's very, like like you said, super kid-friendly, super positive yeah. message. But it's still got that, that, that dark angle. Because does, when, yeah. when they have the feast... <laughs> And uh, Dumbledore is announcing to like the new kids, it's like, uh, and by the way, don't go into the freaking Forbidden Forest or you will die. So I like that they're treating this fantasy, fun, friendly world, where it's like, but there are consequences. Mm-hmm. There are very dark con- Even when you go into Chamber of Secrets, like kids are being petrified. And you're like petrified, like literally petrified. You're frozen in place. And that's only because they're seeing reflections of something. And otherwise, if they look straight into his eyes, they would have died. Mm-hmm. And so I, I like that. I like that they kind of tease the death. And then obviously when Voldemort is introduced is sure. when kind of shit. It's like every movie starting from four on, it's like, oh, there's the death. There, there's the one death that we got to hit on in every film. It mm-hmm. has that fun vibe of like having that little, not horror, but having that creepy mm-hmm. element. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the kind of. Like the Disney Channel original movies. I didn't want to say mm-hmm. it, but like Disney Channel of, original movies because they're so yeah. good at like giving you these little kid stuff and then scaring you for little moments. Yeah. And be like, oh, oh yeah. that's creepy. Oh, that's mm-hmm. scary. But it's still a fun kids movie. And yeah. You still enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Professor Lockhart, man, he's a freaking weird dude. He's, oh, yeah. Um, he's Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh, man. Mm-hmm. Kenneth freaking Branagh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. He's perfect. He's, uh, yeah, this movie is, uh, Chamber of Secrets is very much. Still very kid friendly and yeah. very quirky. I think that's the one that people like the least. I think out so. Of all of them. I think so. I rewatched that one last night. The Basilisk yeah. looks great. I still love looks the way really Snape does his his first Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, way yeah. he does it is well, so Snape's good. Snape's uh, great through a line. He's great. He's actually in the book a lot nastier than in the oh, movies. Yeah? yeah, he he's he's pretty rough in the in the in the movies, but he's like. The, the way she goes about describing him and, and his certain looks that he has, because he's just got like a, a an uglier look uh, about him. And like in R.I.P. Um, oh, wow, my God. I'm blanking Uh-oh. on names. Uh, Snape. Huh? No. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Fucking Snape. I know you're talking uh, about. Mm. The greatest act, one of the greatest actors. Oh, man. my God. Uh, How am I blanking? I'm blanking too, so uh, I can't give you a word. What's Rick, his name? Rick Alan Rickman. Thank you. Okay. Alan Rickman. Took me a second. Alan Rickman. Um, there we go. Uh, for uh, Alan Rickman is just like you know he's he's got a certain look to him, but in yeah. the book like he's just like snarling. He's got like a crooked nose and and like he's just a lot more like snaky, sneveling, and maybe it's just like when you, if you listen to the audiobook, he does like a certain voice that you're just like, ugh, fuck you, Snape. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah uh, there there are certain elements in in Chamber of Secrets that I that I really do like. One of which being uh, the Quidditch scene is great in that one too, mm-hmm. just like the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Basilisk is 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 also really great. Uh, Dobby is obviously an introduction, which. By the way, another difference: uh, the elves in are all throughout all the book series because they they explain that in the book. I don't know which book it is, but they explain that the elves are the ones that are cooking all the meals and doing all the dirty work at Hogwarts. But they're treated kind of fairly, and uh, Hermione actually like gets on board. This also goes to a lot of the themes that we were talking about earlier. Uh, Hermione gets on board with like trying to free house elves because they're like mistreated all the time and she's always yeah, for like yeah. house elves rights and whatnot and eventually like it leads somewhere and actually Dobby appears in most of the books all throughout and isn't just in Chamber of Secrets and then pops in Deathly Hollows like he's an actual character that pops up here and there but we only see him like twice in the movies. Yeah for, so for me for me the the house elves were like the clearest like ra- racial analogy yeah. for me in mm-hmm. terms of like the movies and I thought the way they, they handled that was interesting um, I also gotta say dude I, I took. I finally took the the Pottermore test. Yeah. I, I sat oh, here and made, made an it? entire uh, entire uh, <laughs> account and shit. Um, what house are you, man? I they, I've been named uh, 
Gryffindor. Oh, Gryffindor. Yeah. Well, is that what this house. is? That what yeah, I'm wearing right here? Exactly that what you wear. Yeah. Hey. hey, shout out to Gryffindor. Gryffindor, that's what's up. Basically, like, how do you, how would you define the houses? The the simple log line for each house. Each house, it's yeah. like if you're a Gryffindor, you're like brave, you're right? Brave and honoring. Uh-huh. Ravenclaw. I I've always like taken the Ravenclaws as like the outcast punk kids, okay. sort of. Even though they're not really the touched on. The are the quirky ones. Yeah, quirky. The goofy. only character that. Uh, I think there's a couple characters that pop up from Hufflepuff, but the biggest Cedric. one being Cedric. Yeah. yeah. And then Slytherin are just kind of like the, the clever, clever, the conniving. smart. Yeah, like yeah. the dirty ones, yeah. you know. But that's how it's like. It's because um, um, I'm forgetting the guy who started Slytherin, but uh, um, Salazar Slytherin. Like he go. was like, he was the outcast. Like the more outcast were like, he wanted to rule over all the other ones, whereas the other three were like, no, nah, let's just kind of combine our forces together and just be like a nice little unit and yeah I, I think the, the the first two movies since we're finishing up on chamber mm-hmm. of secrets uh freaking malfoy man that kid's a little brat he's a little brat he's a little brat mm-hmm. and it's 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 the perfect character that's relatable to a lot of children reading Famous these books Harry Potter. every time he says put 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 which is put yeah. And, and the way he like he like filthy little mud blood. Sorry, he, I, it's in the movie. I had to say it. Oh come on, ah, man! Come on. You, you yeah, gave me man. crap for yeah. saying it. Um, social slurs, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's one of those things where it, like it it gives a perspective for these children reading the book. Yeah. Where every kid is like, I know that kid. Yeah, yeah. And, like you can relate that kind of characterization mm-hmm. to each kid. I will say like uh, a, probably my least favorite like somewhat villain in in Chamber of Secrets. Mm-hmm. It's just a memory sure. of of uh, Voldemort stuck in. In uh, Tom Riddle's diary, which yeah. eventually is it's revealed point. to be a Horcrux, which is cool. Yeah. Um. And uh. In and it, not to skip over the first one real quick, but you know Dumbledore possessing Professor Quill is pretty cool too. Being yeah. on the back of his thing and whatnot. So it's like y- y- you they're mean, setting him you mean up. Voldemort. What did I say? You said Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Excuse me. Yeah, that would have been weird. <laughs> Voldemort uh, possessing Professor Quill. So. Yep. Uh, yep. But yeah, the Tom Riddle diary stuff. I'm like, eh, okay, so he's a memory. He so. Everyone's favorite, for the most part. Well, uh, before, we, before we move on, oh, there one. Oh, hey, we move on Expelliarmus! There one. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think the first two, you, do you have to get some credit for establishing the world? The, well, the world, but also it kind of put in a new style of, of, of filmmaking that they, that's that's coined like magical realism, right? Like oh, yeah. okay. the idea mm-hmm. of like of, of fantasy being placed in like a real life situation as right. something that hadn't been seen previously before mm-hmm. the first three Harry Potter films. It's set up that world. Like you see the first movie in like a lot of book adaptations today and it's all, it's not practical. Like a lot of these, these were sets built. They took their time to build. Like I can't imagine being J.K. Rowling having written all these things and then seeing it come to life. Like yeah. I would have been crying my ass off seeing Diagon Alley for the very first time just yeah. like right there in front of you. You can touch it. You can feel it. Yeah, the CG, some of the things don't really hold up that well. It, this movie came out in 99. So it's like... 2001. 2001? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, Sorcerer's Stone? Yeah. I thought Sorcerer's Stone was like 99. No, 2001. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, fuck I me. I think the first book came out in 99, Hey, man, right? it's, it's close. 97. It's close to 99. Out. Uh, but oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, magical, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're magical right. Magical realism, fuck magical hey. realism is the style that the first two kind of lived in and then later became readapted for the later films. But I think when you're, we're going to talk about the third one, fourth yeah. one, the fifth one, they mm-hmm. kind of adapt a different style. Yeah, mm-hmm. and let's let's so. talk about it. Prisoner of Azkaban by Alfonso Cuaron yes. mm-hmm. um, seems to be most people's favorite Harry Potter movie. I think part of it is because of Cuaron. I think yeah. part of it is because they, they started Artistry. to get a little bit more serious. Mm-hmm. And part of it, too, is like the camera movements are cool. Yeah. The, the the editing is cool. Mm-hmm. Like the filmmaking of this movie stands out quite a bit more than yeah. the first two. Yeah. The, the first two are like a nice little duology, yeah. like a nice little setup, like part one, part two. Three is like, all right, let's get somebody else. Ooh, we got a style. There's like a certain yeah. way. His storytelling and his, his way to maneuver certain aspects of that story is like in a different, it's just from a different voice. And that was like something that I think that's unique about this, the, the, the entire franchise. But the and thing I think that it started was, out making it scary. Too. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, it, this is where color palette like, for it completely really scary. Yeah. yeah. So like it the starts dementors. up. Yeah. The Dementors in general. Yeah. It's the Dementors. <laughs> I, I always think uh-huh. of Michael Scott when he says the Dementors. Uh-huh. Uh, like the first two movies start up going like going up because like, as far as like how the the movie looks and feels yeah. the the tone and just the co- 
color scheme in general. It's light and fluffy. They're kids, but then you know, it's like I don't know if they were thirteen or four. He turns. He's twelve. No, he's eleven in the first one. Twelve. So thirteen. You became a. You're becoming a teenager. So it dips down into. It, it gives the darkness a little bit of a kiss before. The fourth one goes up a little bit and then goes right back down, yeah. dark and dark and dark, five yeah. and on. So yeah. I think it's a nice little touch of like, hey, by the way, as much as you love this series being fluffy and lighthearted, here's a little taste of what's to yeah. come. And yeah. Voldemort's not even in it. Like yep. he's, he's referenced, obviously, but like he's like, that's not the main villain. You're worried about one person the entire time. And it turns out not to be that case. Yeah. 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 No, Karan definitely brings his like mixture of. Uh, he, he he definitely takes from, like, the magical realism that the first two kind of established, but then he also adds, like, his own, like, interpretation of, like, the, the, French, the, French, the French movement, right? The French mm, new wave of, like, the yeah. camera movement, right? The camera just free-flowing, yeah. being his own thing. The wonders. And, yeah, there's yeah, a the few wonders here. I there think there's like three, three or four wonders. Oh, there's there's a lot. Oh, I mean, there's, there's my def- favorite is with. Um, didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah. when Harry's talking to uh, um, Ron's father, yeah, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they're just having a conversation and they're just moving back and forth, yeah. and it's just so simple, but it's so cool. Like it's like you can you tell that more effort is being put into as opposed to just a a, a three shot of yeah. a conversation happening. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's the kind of director Caron is. In. He he merged his. His kind of, uh, I mean, he, he incorporated a lot of what he took from like his Mexican filmmaking too, mm-hmm. and you know, particularly, I mean, we talked about it in our Quran episode, "Itu uh, Mama Tambien," is like very much like all long takes. It's like the entire movie is like long takes, and that's what he brings into the Harry Potter thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so he kind of uses the his the 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 French influence, his Mexican influence, um, expression like the the very like big like gothic like ex- mm-hmm. like expressive like i feel like for out of out of all of the the harry potter movies this one's definitely in, like the production design is the most like creepy mm-hmm. like tim yeah. burton like very very german yeah german, tim burton that's the german word expression mm-hmm. that's definitely the word especially yeah. if they inter- introduce the dementors like that like you need yeah. like you can't if you put a dementor in the chris columbus movies it, it, the tones don't match yeah. each other yeah. yeah i love the way they hype up sirius black too because this oh, is the series yeah. they yeah. hype him up so good man mm-hmm. you're like Yo, I want to. That's a get badass name. Gary too. Oldman, yeah. Sirius Gary Black. Oldman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and they hype him up as like, yo, this guy escaped Azkaban. Yeah. Also, like nobody's done that. The thing that, oh, the, the 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 fact that they set up Azkaban, which yeah. is great. When you watch Chamber of Secrets, they reference Prisoner of Azkaban. They have like little tiny things to hint at what's to come, or mm-hmm. just further world building that I think is really nice. Mm-hmm. But also, when you realize that this is a time travel story, yeah. I'm just like. <sighs> There's yeah. my bias. I, I love anything gonna, time travel. I'm the same way, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah. Every time it's like, they're like, time travel. I'm yeah. like, yes, dude, yo, you time travel. You incorporate a time I turner. I love it. I like, love fuck. it. Like, uh, uh, my girlfriend's reading The Cursed Child. She's never read it before. Oh, there it's, you a go. Time it story. it's a time travel it's a story. It's a time travel story. I got a lot of backlash, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I got a, there's a great video I watched by this dude, Austin McDolan or whatever. McDonald's. I don't know what his name is. Shout out to McDonald's. Uh, but, yeah. but, <laughs> but he has a great video about the cursed child, like okay. about why I guess the controversy is big. But but, yeah, either, but yeah. either way, man, time travel. Every time they do it, and I can't lie, are you caught up on on? Damn, I don't want to spoil it. I kind of did already. Uh, right. On GOT, got uh, Game, Game of Thrones? Thrones, Game of Thrones. Yeah, the fact that they introduced time travel in Game of Thrones, and I was like. Oh, oh yeah. shit! Yeah, this okay, is cool. Okay. And yeah, everyone was like, "No, no time subtle. travel." And I was like, "Yeah, I love time yeah. travel, dude." Oh yeah, fuck I yeah. love it. Time but, travel's uh, my shit. But. Yeah, how do you think they handled the time travel in this movie? Before we we move on to my final point for Prisoner, um, I just love that. I love that the time travel. This is probably the first time travel movie that we see. The time travel is connected directly towards memories, right? And like mm-hmm. how memories, how the whole spell is that you have to like. Uh, what was the spell called? The 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 one with the deer that comes out. The Patronus. The Patronus. The Patronus. Yes. How that that is like an expression of happiness of like your happiest memory, right? Mm-hmm. And um and I like that t- that this is the f- one of the first time travel movies that actually explores like what a happy memory because uh, most time travel movies are going back in time to fix something. Yeah. But this is the time travel movie that addresses a happy memory. Um, fixing the problem. So right, I, lo- right. I love the fact that it does yeah. that. The whole setup for it too is great because the entire movie, you're like, so you're great. like, where's Hermione? And then it cuts away and it cuts back and she answers a question. You're like, wait, what the fuck? How'd you get? How'd you do that? And yeah. it makes perfect sense. And that, you almost feel like it's a side story, like it's yeah. a silly side. You're like, yeah. oh, it's a, Hermione likes learning more or something. Yeah. But yeah. then you like realize like, oh, this is way deeper. Yeah. And it makes Hermione. One of, if not the best character in the Harry Potter franchise. Her it builds yeah. her up because in the first one, you're like, oh, it's a silly little girl. And then in the third one, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, crap. Hermione's the goat. She's, yeah. she's given she's permission the best one. by the head of school 
to yep. time travel yep. to learn more. Yeah. Like that's that's dope. And there's that that element of creepiness too. Is like, yeah. oh, this this fucking these these people are just gonna let her use a time traveling device. All right, cool. Yeah, it's and, it's it makes Hermione such a great character. Yeah. It really does build her up so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, and then, sorry, real quick. And they do it. and they do what they do. What I love because I love Back to the Future too. They mm-hmm. do where it's like you're you're going into an event already knowing what's gonna happen, but you're from an outside perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're seeing it the first you're time, they hear yourself. a noise, and yeah. then it's them. It's great. I love it. I man. love it. I love man. I'm gonna rewatch fix, it when I get home. Line, yeah, fixed timeline. Right. Mm-hmm. That's uh, what it's all about. Goblet of Fire is a fun one because it talks. About, it, it's the tournament. Yeah. The Tri Wizard Tournament, mm-hmm. which is a lot of fun. And I, I'm a sucker for sports, so I'm a mm-hmm. sucker for this type of stuff. And it's kind of it's a little a lot, you know, yeah. having to fight a what is it, horn tail dragon or something? Yeah. Uh, and having to do like the freaking water challenge, whatever they do, it's mm-hmm. it's a lot. But at the same time, it's still pretty yeah. fun, man. And it gives a chance for freaking. Robert Pattinson to do yeah. something. Yeah, he's there. not. He's he's actually in the books more than just the one movie. He pops up here and there. It's like, oh, Cedric Diggory. Yeah. This, I think Cedric he is. A, is an Ask Man, isn't he? Is Cedric he Diggory. Yeah, isn't he? He's not. Oh, oh. You're, are you talking about the movie? The character. Mm-mm. No. Okay. He might, might be. Not, he yeah, might have been be mentioned in the movie, but Pattinson's okay. only in Goblet got of got Fire. Got uh, but in the books, like he 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 pops up here and there. Sure. You know it, what's cool? Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. What's cool about this one too is the fact that it introduces because the whole time, uh, you know, if I'm a first timer watching this, mm-hmm. I'm like, it's just Hogwarts, and then they're like, no, France, yeah. and this school, and mm-hmm. that school, and that's really this cool crazy too. Austrian school, and then like all these schools coming together. Yeah. Is what makes it so much more fun. I think that's another reason why I enjoyed Crimes of Grindelwald too. It's the fact that it's oh. like. It's like the French the, Ministry of Max, the London, the New York, the China. The American, the, yeah. It's cool. I think that's cool, man. Yeah, it's more, it's further world building. Mm-hmm. And like when it, when J.K. Rowling kind of announced uh, the Pottermore, like the Potter, the the, the Harry Potter website, it's like the first, because... Um, RB3 was just on it. He was, he was just on it. A little backstory, like when I I did a, a a trip to Florida to the Harry Potter land out there for that's like, right, for did, like a Harry Potter day. And I think that's when they were kind of announcing a lot of these things. And there they're like... Finally, people all around the world are going to have a Harry Potter school that they can relate to. There's one in China. There's one in in, in, in other parts of Europe, not just not just in the UK. Mm-hmm. So like, and there's one in California. So like, they announced all these things, and it's like super cool. And I think we even saw like the first teaser for Fantastic Beasts before now. So that was pretty cool. Oh shoot! But nice. That's where I kind of like fell in love with Harry Potter even more. So I'm like, fuck, this fucking I gotta read yeah. these books more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, in reading Goblet of Fire. Uh, that one's a really fun read because I've never I I was always like the fourth one was kind of my least favorite in, in movie watching them when I was younger mm-hmm. I just I don't know why I think because the third one had such a specific tone they changed it up again for the fourth one and yeah. I don't know I I don't know I maybe Some I just wasn't on the same family. level yeah. maybe but the setup and preparation in the book for Goblet of Fire makes the events more satisfying because like even the events like they're very quick and not as like thorough. Uh, as as like the movies, the movies obviously you got to make them like a big action scene and whatnot. Right. But like um, the the maze, there's like there's sphinxes in in the maze, and they have to f- solve these riddles and shit. And it's like yo, this is cool. Or as like oh, I'm just gonna run around. It's so cool, man. Yeah, that's so there's so like freaking there's like cool. cool stuff like that, and um, like. Uh, Harry in the book trying to um, figure out how he's going to do the underwater stuff, and um, I think Neville's the one that actually helps him helps him out. Um, I don't remember how he didn't. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. That somebody helps him out how to figure out how to all to do all that stuff. But then again, you know, it's all set up, and then the ending itself Dude, is his, his freaking death, Cedric's death. Yeah. Is, is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, oh damn, mm-hmm. they did that. They just went there. Yeah, it's really powerful. That's that's the that's the shift. That's the uh, yeah. That's, that's the Empire that's Strikes the, Back moment. That's the start of the shift too, because mm-hmm. they introduced the, the, those kind of spells. Because the whole time you're kind of wondering, watching these movies, it's like, if I have all that power, can I just kill someone with like a word? The answer is yeah. No. You yeah, can you totally could. do that, and it's really that's where bad. they introduce the three curses. That's right. Three, four, four curses, three curses. Yeah, how many curses are? Uh, and from there, it goes into the start. I think of the four films that really get into the dark stuff, which is starts with the Order of the Phoenix. Real quick, before it, just a tiny yeah. little thing. They also introduce uh, a little bit of romance in the fourth one as well. Oh, that's right. Is this Cho Chang? Yeah, this is where she pops up. Oh and, my yeah, god, and, man! And the ball right. and the dance. Is... It's it's a very big pivotal thing oh, because that's it's right. like they're that's they're right. setting him up. He's got a, he's, he's feeling dang, emotions bro. for people was, for the I first was time. So hard for Harry the whole time. I'm like, mm-hmm. come on, bro, shoot your shot, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. shoot Go your for it, man. shot, Harry. 
Um, yeah. I love the six one with the We'll get there. Because we'll okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I've got a lot to say about that. Uh, let's talk about Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix introduces my most hated character in Harry Potter. Oh, that no. I want her I, dead. I want her dead! Uh, <laughs> and that is, uh, what's her face? Uh, ah, what's her name? I already forgot her name. Uh, I was just talking about her yesterday because my girlfriend hates her too. Oh, uh, my God. I want her I want her dead so bad. Oh, shit. Um, oh, I, I freaking... I'd, is, uh, I would totally do what that What is her to name? Her. Uh, uh, Pro- Professor... Professor no. Oh, oh, the whole the, the homegirl in the pink. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, oh I know, my I god, I can't about. believe I can't. I am not a true Harry Potter fan. Uh, well, I thought, isn't that, no, when when, we, when I saw Fantastic Beast, I thought they kind of made reference to that lady at the beginning of the second one, when uh, that one lady in pink was standing in front of the, front of the lady, in front of the building protesting the wizard shit. Oh, it, the, it's uh, Dolores uh, Umbridge. Duh. Dolores Umbridge. I don't know if, that, if that's actual. Oh actual my god, mm-hmm. I wanted her yeah, dead sorry. so yeah. freaking bad. Okay. I just, I wanted to like freaking... <laughs> That's what I wanted to do to <laughs> freaking. With the sound bites. <laughs> um, either way, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, besides that, I mean, the whole movie. It's a little bit hard to watch for me. This movie, really? if I'm being honest, oh. just because of her. Oh, see, this is so my, annoying. This one's my favorite out of all of them. Really, yeah. it's your favorite mm-hmm. because uh, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. It's great, yeah. but it's just like. Oh, I just want to choke her. <laughs> yeah. No, I get that, but I think that's what makes her so good. It's you good. Know, I, yeah. I think that because especially when she pops up later, because she's like she's like the most like. The the whole like conservative, oh yeah. like prissy, we all had that proper, teacher. We all had a but teacher, but at the like same that. time, she's so hypocritical. Oh yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like it makes it so much worse because you're a like power thing at some yeah, point. Yeah, because you're like you can see through the bullshit, and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it makes you even worse. Yeah. I hate it. See, like this, great, this one's my favorite because with all these movies, I like to try to reference them to outside things to help me yeah. enjoy it and like it. Like, like, what are your references to? I reference this to like being an Avengers movie because uh. you're learning about. The Order of Phoenix, which is like this crew of wizards that's that band true. together to fight against evil, like fuck. And then you see the photo, you're like, shit, that's them. Look at that team: Sirius Black, Dumbledore, the Potters, uh, Neville's parents, like all these people that came together. And now Harry's doing, starting his new Order of Phoenix with people and training them and teaching them to learn spells and everything. And the fact that he realizes that yes, he's the chosen one, mm-hmm. but he's not fully owning that because they have that meeting with all the kids from Hogwarts after shit's kind of hitting the fan with Umbridge. And he's like, look, yeah, all these things you're naming off and all these things that I did were great, but I had help. I didn't do this shit alone. And I like that. It, it brings up the vulnerability sure. of him and that he can't do it by himself, that he needs a team behind him. And I think that's one of the things that kind of brings me into it. I also love David Yates' style and look mm. because he definitely, when that movie, when he first did that movie, he that, that was like the look of Harry. Like it's, it was more moody than the rest yeah. of them. I think that it's like they, they just bump that saturation yeah. and bump it, bump it, and it just it gets darker, yeah. darker, darker, got that, darker. Got that uh, color temperature down. Yeah, got and that's Zack Snyder, bro. Yeah, I mm-hmm. know. Uh, well, I think that's funny because I think he, I think he harpens a little bit back towards the crown vision of it. Oh, yeah, that's um, true. He's like, wait, 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 bring it yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. What are you yeah. doing? Don't go back to Columbus. Let's do this. <laughs> and, yeah. and, but I think, it, I think it, I think it actually um, heightens the material because it, yeah. like, like you said, it, they're getting older. And this is a much darker time for them now. Yes. So, um, that it, finale, though, man, that third act. Dude. Woo, that's, with that's, that duel, that's Dumbledore Obi-Wan versus, versus, Vader, versus dude. Voldemort. Yeah. It's funny. I was like, so oh, cool. Dang. There's no music. It's yeah. the, the, the sound mix. The sound effects. So <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> yeah. The mm-hmm. sh- yeah, you're seeing yeah. pulls down. into that water. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, yeah. shit. Because you're left with Let's this go. unsettling feeling from the yeah. fourth movie. And then when this one starts off, like, all hell's broken loose. There's rumors. Uh, of course, they're trying to deny the rumors. The, the Ministry of Magic is denying that Voldemort is back. That's why they, they sent Umbridge in there to make sure that the shit doesn't get out. Yeah. Or at least they, they don't want people fearing that he's back because uh, the Ministry of Magic doesn't want that on his hand. Like, uh, he doesn't want that on his conscience. Yeah. So you bring in all these different elements and then when they, f- after after he's defeated and when the Ministry of Magic walks in and sees Voldemort and then he just disappears, they're like, oh shit, yeah. he is back. Yep. And uh, it's just so it's good. It's really good, man. Yeah. I mean, that that even just the ending alone is worth like, yeah. uh, it's it's better than a lot and, of the And movies. they kill, and of course, uh, all these movies, 
from Goblet of Fire on. They got to kill one person. Oh, that's right, Black man. They kill Sirius Black. Lestrange. They give Lestrange a lot, man. Yeah. Oh, she's she's oh, like oh basically she's so great. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. basically like if I was thinking about it as I was watching Deathly Hallows Part Two last night. Mm-hmm. She's basically like his number two. Oh yeah, for sure. She, if she's if, like, it, it would go Voldemort and then Lestrange. Yeah. If if Voldemort's the Emperor, she's Vader. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I was thinking about that's it, and I was like, like she's that. basically like. Hit, like if he dies, it's it's Lestrange who's taking him over. Yeah, mm-hmm. because she's so like in the, prominent. And in the books too, he's got like more followers. Like yeah. one dude's a, I think one dude's a werewolf too. Like they, and he's in the movie, but he's, he's just Greyback. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think Greyback's the werewolf. I like they're dude, they're a lot more fleshed out in the books and shit. Yeah, it, it's definitely like the the concept of. A Death Eater, the someone death eaters, that, like that's such yeah. a cool, badass metal name it is too. Cool. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to probably one of my favorites. It's it's up there, man, and that's Half Blood Prince. Yeah, yeah this was my second favorite. This one is so franchise. good, man. Look, I rewatched this one again recently, like yeah. a day or two ago. It's so freaking good, man. The this way was... they build it up and the way. Again, I keep we keep saying the word, but it's just true. The way it just gets darker, mm-hmm. and then this one even goes darker. See, so here's the thing, though. Oh. This was this was uh, I saw I saw the first two in theaters when I was younger. Yeah. Didn't see three, four, and five in theaters. Just yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just kind of like grew up, like oh I don't care about Harry Potter. Saw the saw the sixth one and then saw part one and two. When I saw the sixth one, I was like, that's exactly how it went for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, exactly okay. how it went for me. Yeah, like when I saw the sixth one, I was like, oh, this is like what's going on? Nothing's happening. It's kind of boring. Whatever. I used to think that for the longest time. Mm. When I got back in in the movies and I rewatched them and I started rereading them. I realize that not only is this the darkest movie out of all of them, easy. It's the funniest one too. Yeah, it is. That's kind of fucking true. hilarious mm-hmm. because it's got the love story. Yes, yeah. 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 Whereas yeah. like they they tease the love stuff in four and five. This one, this whole movie's about love. Yeah, it's one hundred percent all about love. Yeah. This one is well, a little bit more mature too, bro. Well, because oh yeah. there's I, some. I, well, I was gonna say I don't even think it's about love. I think it's about horny. That's what bro. I'm saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I, mean, I was gonna say this is about one thing, Robert, yeah. Robert, and it's yeah. about horniness is love. Yeah. Let's be I was going to say, yeah, man. The same thing. I yeah. was watching this movie for the first time. When I was watching it for the first time, the mm-hmm. whole time it kind of clicked in me. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. All these girls want to be with Harry Potter because he's yeah. the chosen one. He's the chosen yeah. one. And they're all like, oh, we want to. Girls using we, love potions. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah. Yeah. we want to sleep with the chosen one. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this one movie of like, just went there. One of the sweetest things because like, there's that will he won't, will she yeah. won't, like, like that and tension it, between and Harry and Hermione. Him. Oh, yeah. Like, That's what's great because he's such a like wholesome young man. Yeah. But at the same time, he's like, oh, bro. I'm the I'm the motherfucking chosen one, yeah. bro. Well, yeah, he's like even I can like, get with any girl, and then Hermione's like, they just like you because you're the chosen one. And he looks at Hermione, he's like, like but, yeah, but I am the chosen one, yeah. <laughs> bitch, <laughs> bitch. This is what I do, yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. He's though. like, uh, so what, man? Yeah, I love and it. I love I love the stuff with Ron too, how he's yeah. kind of getting a little bit more confident and whatnot. Yeah, and the, and the yeah. freaking what's her, the horny girl, the crazy that's after girl. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, <laughs> man. Yeah, I was like, damn, when Ron gets love potion, yo, that's crazy. Yeah. Everybody's just trying this cuffing season. It's, it's a nice, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, such, yeah. it's such a sweet. <laughs> and it is set during like Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, such a sweet and beautiful moment though when he like he's like laying in the hospital bed. Yeah. And yeah. he's like going back and forth and he says Hermione's yeah. name. Because like, oh, yeah. I love Hermione and Ron, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think they're great. And yeah. I can't lie, the whole time I'm like, come on, Ron. Yeah, get after Come it. on, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. And get then the down. same with Jenny Weasley yeah. when he's like, and it's Weasley. like, Jenny uh, Weasley. Get it right. He's with Dean. Is it Dean Smith? Dean 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 Norris. That's fucking breaking bad. Isn't it Dean, Smith? Dean, 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 Norris, Dean Smith. Yeah. I think it's Dean Smith. But either way, I was like, come on, Harry. Dean Thomas. Dean Thomas. Yeah. I was like, come on, Harry. Mm-hmm. Come on, step up your game, bro. Mm-hmm. Like the yeah. whole time I'm doing that. Well, I just, I've always been like Harry and Hermione. Like that should have been a thing. Like, mm. even, even, really? Even, even. I was going to say, thing. we'll get to that with, with Deathly Hollows. They kind of touch on that a little bit. Yeah. But uh, but the fact that, I don't know, man, this movie, you're right. There's a scene where, where that girl's going crazy yeah. and she's crying. And Dumbledore is like, they're, uh, they're just standing there. Yeah. And Snape and Albus, they're and uh, like, they're like, uh... True love. True love. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's so again. awkward. And he just walks <laughs> And you're like, yeah. this is weird, yeah. man. <laughs> but you see, like, you get all that fluff and you get all that. Yeah. And then you, then we, it, this is the movie where they introduce Horcrux and, yeah. and, and all yeah. that. And, yeah. um, and the, but then, you know, that, the, the, the ending itself it's, it's, uh, it's so with sad. Like, it's so fucking sad. Yeah. It's so good, though, man. It's really it's good. Intense. It's so good. Like, the fact that the, the, the way they set up the vanishing cabinet, mm. uh, the way they, they, they have the whole uh, Snape unbreakable bond. Yeah. Uh, Tom Felton is great. The, the way it. Draco He's, is just, like, wait, struggling wait, wait. with, yeah. like, all that stuff. It's the first time Draco isn't, like, 
a, 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 a sniveling piece yeah, of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he exactly. stays away from it all. See, that's yeah. why that's why I like this movie. To that's me, this a good movie. Point. To me, this yeah. movie felt like it was the first time that every character had more than just yeah. a basic archetype. Like, look, Draco's always been kind of a pussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's always been annoying. Yeah. yeah, he's always been that. But now he's been tasked because his father's an Ask Man after after Order of Phoenix. Mm-hmm. It's like now he has all this pressure to live up to the Malfoy name to serve Voldemort himself, mm-hmm. and now he's being pressured into it. But you, I mean, we eventually find out that uh, Dumbledore knew this was happening. Yeah. He didn't want to happen because he had he had Snape in 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 his ear with it all. Mm-hmm. But like again, you don't know any of this stuff, so it's great not knowing it. And then going back and rewatching it, and you see the tiny little hints. It's just the, the, it makes you feel for Snape more yeah. than anything. And the way they build up the whole the Horcruxes, Horcruxes, yes. in this movie, the Horcrux. I was gonna say the whole crux. <laughs> 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 it's the cruxes. spell the hoes put on Them me. Hey, <laughs> crux. Yo, Oh, no. Bitch got me in a horcrux, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bitch trying to kill me. I put myself in a horcrux. She can't get that nah, shit. She can't get that shit. Nah, nah. Uh, nah. But either way, I mean, the way they build that <laughs> with a Slughorn, um, oh, it's so great good, too. man. I mean, yeah. the, the idea of breaking down your soul and making yourself immortal mm-hmm. and the fact that that's considered so evil is so well done. And and, and like you said, man, the comedy is... is the, the Luna Lovegood is a freaking... So funny! Oh, she's in this wonderful. Movie. She's the introduced way, in Order of the, Phoenix, the, but and then this one, it's just like it's when, like when they're hyping up the Quidditch match, and they're, she just turns around and she's wearing the lion outfit. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "Hey, Harry." Yeah. 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 Like, oh, oh, I hey, know. Luna. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, everyone knows a Luna in their mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Uh, and the way that I love the scene where where Hermione is talking to Harry. And, and Hermione is like, well, I was going to go with Ron, and Ron's going with this girl, and then now this girl is like, what are you going to do, Harry? You could have just gone with me or something. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to go with someone cool. And then yeah, it cuts, yeah, it's him and, and Luna. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, great. Don't worry, I've got someone. Yeah, he's I, like, say, I got like, someone cool, man. He's really nice to her in this movie. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. I also really liked... Um, I also really like the fact that uh, well, I, I really love that scene where they're in the when they first are confronted by the Death Eaters for the first for not the first time, but when they're in the snow all by themselves and then they're just kind of walking oh, back from the thing. Yeah, and that felt like a real like horror like kind of scene. And um, I think that's where I think that's where the fifth one, the sixth one, and the seventh and the eighth one kind of go for a more extreme like expressionist, almost like horror, almost mm-hmm. kind of kind of vibe for it too. So. Yeah, and I re- I think the sixth one kind of nailed the tone of being both funny and That's both absolutely like right. gothic and, and, and slightly horrific it's yeah. so good. at the same time. This one is so good, man. And I, and I got to say the last thing I'll say about Half-Blood Prince, I mean, besides the Snape stuff, because to me, the way they build up the Snape stuff where you're kind of believing that, yo, this guy really did play a ploy mm-hmm. and we all thought he was kind of a good guy, a creepy good guy, but a good guy, but he was actually evil this whole time and he yeah. killed him. And like yeah. The way that they're kind of telling you, they're telling you that, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you're kind of questioning it. It's so good. Yeah, right? especially when we learn, I mean, we can get into that. The stuff that we learn about Snape and Dumbledore, the things that they're planning, yeah. there's still, there is some like subtle like, like, okay, he knew that there were going to be some consequences. So it's like the hate for Harry is very real. But also it comes from a, a side of love because of how much he loved Lily. But it's just he, he keeps looking at him and he and all he sees is James. Yeah. All he sees is his father. So and well he can't get that away from him. So when we talk about half the I mean, uh, Deathly Hollows in a second, um, I'll, I'll get into that just a tad bit more. But it's set up because this whole franchise it's like Snape and this Snape and, and Potter like there's always been that that yeah. budding head and stuff but at the end of the day like you find out in, in Harry Potter in the first movie that he was trying to protect Harry yeah. from from yeah. The, that curse that Coral was putting on him you know yeah. and mm-hmm. you know he defends him in Chamber of Secrets that maybe he was just there at the wrong place at the wrong time you know mm-hmm. there's like subtle hints in there and it's just been all these years set up for so long to see him do something like that and in, in like the innocence of Dumbledore he's like uh, Snape, Severus, please. And then Vada Katabra, yeah. boom, kills him. So You're like, God. what the fuck? And he's like, I am the half blood prince, bitch. And oh, then he walks away. When he says the mic. that, it's oh. great. It's when great. He, well, even when he, what is this, Sectus, Sectus, some, some porum. Uh, some, I Sectus Sempre? Something like that. And and then even <laughs> uh, Severus is like, bro, are you using my spells against me, man? Yeah. Come on, mm-hmm. man. I'm the half blood prince. It's I was the same like, person. Oh, it's the same spell that he used on yeah. uh, Malfoy in the yep. bathroom. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. The same spell, which is Snape's spell. Blood prince. Yeah. It's so good, man. It's so well done. The last thing I'll say a bit, um, the Malfoys, man. I, I kind of like this little side story about the Malfoys and how they kind mm-hmm. of always look down on people and then they yeah, just get slapped around oh, yeah. by the Death Eaters, by, by Voldemort. Narcissa? Narcissa? 
I think that's the mother's I name. Fr- yeah, but she's great too. Yeah, she's um, wonderful. But the fact that, that Ma- uh, Lucius has got his reputation in the in the gutter, Draco mm-hmm. is trying to prove himself, but he's still a little bitch. Like even the, Lucius, like in Deathly Hallows, Lucius, he's just like, he's man, like, he my, literally my gets favorite, slapped. My back favorite, slapped. he's just like, my lord. <laughs> and he gets, yeah, he gets his my lord. <laughs> no, when he's like slapping, oh, we'll get to Deathly Hallows, but when he's like slapping him in Deathly Hallows, mm-hmm. he's like, have you always, always been this like useless or something like yeah, that? And I was yeah. like, bro, you're getting bitch slapped right now. Mm-hmm. That's so bad. Yeah. Uh, but the Malfoy story is pretty well done. I kind of like the the fact that you see the Malfoys as like this rich family who looks down on other people, yeah. and now they're kind of getting their due. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you kind of feel bad for them. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's really well done, man. Especially for Malfoy in the end. I mean, they 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 handle it better obviously in the books because like in the movie is like Harry saves them that one time from mm-hmm. the fire dragon, and mm-hmm. then it cuts to the end. Oh, we're best friends. It's like oh okay, there's a little bit of gray area right there. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know what can you do? You, you can only do so much in adaptation. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's get to the last two. Uh, famously divided into two movies. Mm-hmm. I think this was one of the major franchises this is the to first, do that. This, this was, was the, the first the, time. The first one. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I know Hunger one. Games did it. Yeah. I know uh, oh, God, Twilight did it. Twilight did it. Uh, Both of them poop. Avengers uh, did it. I don't know about that. <laughs> Avengers, did Avengers it. technically yeah. doing it now. Avengers yeah. are doing it now. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah, and it all started with Harry Potter Part One and Two. Mm-hmm. I think it's warranted. I think yes. it works as these two, one long movie, but divided into two. Well, I think. What do I, you think? I, for me, I kind of. I mean, I almost think. I, I don't know. I prefer. I prefer Part One almost to Part Two because really? okay. to me, the oh, part, part One actually feels like a full movie to me. Like okay. Part mm. One feels like a complete story. Whereas from Part Two is just one line. Part Two is just like, oh yeah, this is the third act. Act. That's yeah, kind of a good yeah. point. Mm. Um, but I, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the oh, part, part two. I love, the, I love part two. Mm. Um, but just the, the 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 part one in and of itself, to me, that feels like the most personal Harry Potter movie to me. Mm. It feels like the most like character study we're ever going to see yeah. in, in in this franchise. Would we you get, say it's the slowest one? Um, I, don't, I don't think that's a bad I don't thing. Think, well, I, I don't. Yeah, maybe maybe it is, but maybe, to me that's not a bad thing. To me, okay. to me this is because the they first... have the tent stuff with Hermione and Harry. And I love that. Whoa, I love shit, it. Really? I love it. To me, See? to me that's like I've even referenced that in like papers of like this is really? like an ideal young young because because these movies are supposed to be it's a road trip movie. This Both is, road, it's like a road. Yeah, it's road trip, and mm-hmm. then it's also like teen. They're, like these movies were going from kids movies to being teen movies, mm-hmm. and this is the first like young adult moment. I feel mm-hmm. like this is like. A conflicting love coming to a head between yeah. these two people, but yet, like, yeah, they're finding humanity and friendship in each other at their like lowest point. That's yeah. a good point. This See, is where they have to grow up, like literally. Yes, yeah, they're on yes. their own because the Order of the Phoenix, like, legit Disbanded, couldn't defend yeah. them, mm-hmm. and they were mm-hmm. like, "Peace out, Harry. Go out here with your three friends right. and like yeah. defend yourselves." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. this is yeah. the first time. I'll say the sixth one is probably the slowest one, but again, it's not the best. Like, not, I think it's good. Not, I think it's, it's no, really it's a good, good yeah. like because yeah. the storytelling is engaging enough. I think. Right. Whereas, like Harry Potter Part One, Death of Hell is Part One. It's slower because they're stuck on one thing for such a long time, yeah. and, it, and it feels a little bit stretched out. Mm. But again, some of the things are are, are, are earned because. Harry and Ron have never really fought each other, That's a good point. and only in um, mm-hmm. uh, Goblet of Fire is mm-hmm. when they were like at each other's throats. Right, and it comes back up in this one because. You know the Horcrux is doing shit to Ron, and yeah. at the same time, like you know, he misses his family. They have a nice wedding. It gets interrupted. They're ripped away from each other. Yeah. And right. like I think part one starts off with a bang, like yeah. like the first the, the, first the hour, like yeah. boom, boom, and then as soon as they get to the woods, is when it kind of like okay, you're yeah. stretching yeah. this out just a tad bit. But I, again, I, I don't I don't have like too big of an issue with it. I know a lot of people do, but yeah, I, I think it, I think it's fine because when they eventually do destroy, because they're just trying to destroy one Horcrux the entire That's a good movie, point. yeah, the entire yeah. movie. And yeah. then, whereas in the second one, they do the rest of them. Yeah. One's already two of them are already destroyed, and then uh, they do the rest. And yeah, two. they do the rest of them because even like even like uh, um, the Ravenclaw crown is like thrown in there. Like what? Yeah. That's in the castle? That oh, quick. perfect. We're here. Yeah, you know yeah. so. But well, I, I think I, I think to me to me to me I like the fact that it was only one because it was like the most essential one. Like this is the true. one we need to. And I think it set up. You know, it set up everything that was going to go. And, Down. And, and 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 definitely our part too, and particularly like the character spheres and what's at stake for mm-hmm. each individual person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and uh how at the end of the line everybody is. Like and uh, to me to me, like I didn't mind it being feeling stretched out and we we're here for a long time mm-hmm. only because it was like this has been 
this has been seven seven films in the making, and 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 it's finally a time that we could settle down and have those real like right. the quiet the quiet character the, moments. The, 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 yeah, the quiet before the storm. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's like, and I really appreciate it on that. Well, like, you know what I like too? I like I like Ron, you were saying it right now. Mm-hmm. I, I like Ron's line to Harry when Harry is like, "I know what you mean," and he's and Ron gets pissed. Obviously, he's, mm, he's yeah. affected by the Horcrux. Yeah, but he's like, "No, you don't. Mm. I have a giant ass family, and you ain't got nobody." And mm-hmm. I was like, "That's kind of a messed up thing to say," but at the same yeah. time. It's kind of true. No, yeah. Like I got people I can lose. Who do you got? Like yeah. you got nobody. And you're and dragging I my, me along on this journey. Yeah. Like my whole family's trying to protect you, and they can die at any second. Yeah, whereas man. like your family's dead, man. Like yeah. that's a real thing. It was, it's the internal conflict within every character, like being externalized, yeah. either through visually when when they're seeing their fears yeah. happen, or just through moments like that. I gotta say, man. It, when when Ron tries to destroy the Horcrux and we see the the, the Voldemort black smoke come out, uh, and mm. when he taunts him with freaking Harry, Harry and Hermione, yeah, she's I up. was like, she's bro, like even, naked, like, oh yeah. shit, I would be like, oh, sh- give yeah. me that Gryffindor yeah. sword, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> That's, my, yeah. That's yeah. my Hermione, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, even I was like getting pumped up. I was like, bro, I'd be pissed too. I'd yeah. be like, right. you can't show me that shit and me not get mad. Yeah. That that was kind of dark. Like oh, the fact yeah. of like seeing your best friend it's hook up with the girl that you love mm-hmm. and you feeling like less than a man yeah well, like, that's his biggest fear that's, that's his biggest fear yeah, like he's like yeah. nobody and he's like less than and like he, at least his brothers are kind of cool mm-hmm. but he's never been the cool one yeah um and and he her, like his last chance is hermione that's his mm-hmm. last chance mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the one thing that's so cool that he can't achieve is like the the greatest a uh, muggle-born wizard of all time, Hermione Granger, yeah. and he can finally be happy with that, and then Harry's gonna sweep that away too? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, like, that, it's such a big moment for Ron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it recontextualizes a lot of the franchise for for him and for the, uh, Harry and Hermione yeah. uh, mm-hmm. to some extent too, so. Yeah. Uh, and then it finishes with, obviously, we're learning about the the freaking Hollows, the Deathly Hollows. Deathly Hollows. Oh, yeah, yeah. with the yeah. animation, with the, that beautiful that's animation. Cool. It's yeah, so it's cool. really, really cool. Yeah. It's also, it's like, it's like, it, not trying to confuse you too much. She's like, okay, how many Horcruxes are? Okay, how right. many Deathly Hollows are there? Okay, right. okay. It, it, let's give you a cartoon so we can. Yeah, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Let's distract it. you for a few minutes and, yeah. and and do that. But I think they set that up very nicely, and just like the whole idea is behind it. And then um, that's what Luna Lovegood's Luna Lovegood's father. It is. Um, that's Ray Fine. Lucilius. Lucilius Love. Maybe. Oh, the I'm thinking of the actor, the guy who played fucking the lizard. That's right. That's where I know him from. I don't know. Something. No, I don't know. But yeah. It's like a great little, great little scene and great little mm-hmm. tie up, and then and Dobby dies at the end. Oh, oh yeah, Dobby. I forgot about that. And, also, and Bellatrix is like freaking like yeah, sparring hurt. Hermione. Yeah, that's dark, man. Oh yeah, yeah that's like she's heavy. branding her and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I was like, ooh, that, yeah. that, that's yeah, real. Bellatrix, I felt yeah. for Hermione when she was like crying and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, and finally, it finishes up with part two, which I can't lie, man. I, I have, I don't know. It's hard to pick a favorite, but if I would have to pick a favorite, it would probably be. This one would probably be part two. Out, right? of, all, the two out of the Harry Potter? Out of all the Harry Potter, oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, it's it's. here's my thing. When I saw this for the first time, I literally, I watched this, you know, at my Harry Potter party, and, and I saw it on a big screen, like a projector screen, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is the most packed movie, mm. dense movie, I think oh, is a better yeah, yeah. word, uh-huh. I've ever seen. Yeah, There's yeah. not a single moment that I could get up to pee in this movie. And mm-hmm. I was trying to find one. I was like, okay, I can pee now. Oh, no, wait, there's something can't. else is happening. Oh, wait, what? oh, crap, mm-hmm. we're learning about Snape. Yeah. Oh, oh, crap, we're learning about the, oh, another hor- Horcrux. Oh. It throws so like, much, it's like. It's so mm-hmm. dense to you, the point that it's a little much. Oh, yeah. Like, but at the same time, I I enjoy it because I, I just feel like it's just dumping. I think this is how Avengers Infinity War 2 is going to be like. Could I be. think it's just going to be a giant dump of like, oh, my it God. It might be less. I or don't, I don't know, man. Well, I mean, it, they're, they're completely different because I think like the Avengers series, there's so many more films. That, sure. that have been fleshed out that I think, I like, think it's Infinity, be crazy. like Infinity War they proved they can throw a lot Infinity of shit War at the wall crazy. and stick I don't know if they proved it but hey. the fuck are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> stupefied oh uh, no hey 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 man I, I stupefied you yeah. but, stupefied stupefied <laughs> I like that it lights up. <laughs> no, but um, but, uh, but with uh, uh, Deadly Hollows Part Two, it throws it all out there, and it's the one. It's the one movie. Like I think there's a lot of the movies in the franchise you can jump in mm-hmm. and like not having seen some of it and kind you of pick up. To. 
you, you, have, you to. have to have seen All everything the moments, leading. It leads up to everyone it. Everyone has a great moment in yeah. this movie. Yeah. Every single character. Mm-hmm. Neville. The freaking... Yeah, Neville. Neville's <laughs> Seamus. Seamus with his explosion. Seamus with yeah. his explosion. Luna yeah. Lovegood has Luna a moment. Luna Lovegood, yeah. Uh, freaking uh, Ron and, and Hermione and yeah. Harry and Mama Weasley. Oh, yeah. And, get, she, got the, she got her get away from her, you bitch line yeah, in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. every single character feels like they get their due in this movie. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so well done. Yeah, it that's, is. It's probably the best executed like finale yeah. in terms of like a franchise movie that you could have asked for. Mm-hmm. And this kind of does the Avengers Infinity War type like yeah. battle where it's like you yeah. know shit hits the fan and everyone's mm-hmm. going ham. It's crazy. Yeah, and I and I, I think the strongest thing about it like aside from all the battling and uh, aside from all like the the huge themes that are being played all throughout the movie, uh the the one that sticks out to me is the stuff with Snape. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. yeah, that's when you realize like okay, he he made this pact with Dumbledore. You find out through his memories f- from the tears that he has been in love with Harry's mom, and so it makes yeah. so much sense why he has such a huge grudge against Harry. But it's also really dark because he knows, and this is where like the the little bit of hatred for Harry comes in mind because he knows as much as he has to protect Harry. Harry has to die. Mm. And so that's a little bit like, you know, fuck you, you gotta die, but whatever, you're probably gonna come back. Like, cause like, Harry doesn't know that, that what's gonna happen after he dies. Cause when yeah. Harry finds out that he has to pass, he's, he's one of the Horcruxes, or he's one, he's part of it, that he doesn't know what's gonna happen. And then eventually when he goes into this other area and he's talking to Dumbledore, Dumbledore's like, yeah, you can know, you could come with me. You can move on. Who knows? I don't know what the hell yeah, that means. It's like, it's up or to you, you can just wait for the next train and go back and yeah. try to finish this. And you know, he has to go back and finish it. But I think that's one of the biggest things, the most important thing, because Snape has been such a prominent role in everything. And when Harry learns about it, it's really fucked up. It it's is. really, really messed up because James Potter was kind of a dick. He's yeah. kind of an asshole. He's kind of an arrogant prick. And you shove all that in there, and and you know Snape was just trying to be a loyal friend, a loyal person to this mm-hmm. person, and the one thing that he had left, the the that little bit of love that he had for Lily, was Harry. And as much as he hated him, he had to sacrifice his own life because that's just the that was the honorable thing to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean it, it's the whole like you find out the Patronus of Snape is the doe, just like Lily is. Yes, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't lie, man. My first time watching this, I was like, wait a minute, is is Snape? Harry's dad? Is that what we're learning right now? Yeah. I, I thought that I, for a second. I mean, yeah. obviously, I figured it out. But mm-hmm. now you never know. Oh, yeah. oh J.K. Oh, tweets it JK. out. She tweets it out. She, she's, on Actually, death, she's on her deathbed. She's like, yo, Snape's the father. Peace! Snape's the father, <laughs> and he's really gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that cloak. No, uh, um, he was I, gay for James the whole time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do gotta say, I, I love. I saw this movie two times the first day it came out. The Friday, I, I Friday, didn't see July. it in theater, man. Mm. Yeah, I, saw I wish I did. I saw it again. Pretty Sorry. epic. It was, it was amazing. Years ago. Yeah. Even the trailer for it, despite the the trailer, <laughs> but they, the, the trailer that they have is like it's a combination trailer. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's a, it's a trailer for part one and two. Yeah. So it's like. All the footage you're seeing is like, okay, which part is this for? It's yeah. like a, it's, it was like a, tra- a clever way of promoting the movie. They obviously had like another trailer just for part two, but yeah. I remember see- sitting in the theater like seeing that trailer and like the kids flying on the brooms as Hogwarts is like a mess and people are battling yeah. back and forth. And uh, so cool. By the way, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Maggie Smith as uh, a McGonagall. Oh, oh yeah. my god! There's she's a line great. she has in part two. She's like, I've always wanted to do that oh, spell. Yeah. And I love her so much. I, so I, my favorite actually is is, is, is Seamus. Oh, yes, like, yes. Are, are you seriously going to let us do this? And she's like, blow it up. Like, boom. And she's like, yes, like, boom. Yes. And she <laughs> says that. I was like, that's great. Yeah. It's so stuff. good. Yeah. Uh, I, there's so many great moments. I mean, Neville has a great moment in this movie when oh, he kills he Nagini. Nagini. Nagini, Nagini yeah. I'm sorry. Um, c- come with me, Nagini. 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 Yeah. The way Voldemort speaks in this movie mm-hmm. is amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the, the freaking... Uh, the moment where where Harry finds out that the snitch, uh, the golden snitch, the has first the, uh, one has the resurrection stone, mm-hmm. to me was like amazing. It like so much everything sense. comes together in that scene. Yeah, uh, and just the final battle, man. It really is the true epicness. Yeah. that. The Harry the Potter thing. movies have been building up to. Yeah, because the thing was like, if you haven't, for me, someone who didn't read the books, like I didn't know how the 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 book 
at, or the movie ended. And it's you, you never know, is it going to be the thing? Are they going to change the ending? You know, they did that shit a little bit with the Twilight movies, I heard. I didn't read the book, but I saw that uh, shit. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. Did I know you read happened. the book? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you uh, love sorry. the Twilight movies, yeah, right? Yeah, great films. Okay, don't talk the, about it. Your Twilight <laughs> is my <laughs> home games, yeah. man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I love but, fun games, too. All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry for bringing up Back Twilight. Back to Harry uh, <laughs> No, but like, so I, I'm thinking like, okay, what's going to happen in the end? Is Harry going to die? And it's like, yeah, he dies. Yeah, he does. He comes back, he but comes he back. still dies. He still died, man. Still dies. He has to come back. It's, yep. it's a clever way of like, you know, if she's like, if she's writing in this thing and, and, and kids are looking forward, because the, the last book came out when the movies were coming out. And I yeah. think they overlapped each other. And so people are like, you know, is Harry going to die? And you're like, oh, I'm not going to say shit. And then when he dies and you think he's dead for that certain moment, you're like, oh, fuck, they killed him. You're like, no, nah, they're going to bring him back. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. But yeah. so does he come back to life in the book? or? Yeah. No, yeah, he comes okay. back and, right. he, and he kills he kills. Uh, uh, okay. Tom. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. I love You when and he, me together, Tom. I love when he says that. Oh, yeah, it's fine. I right. love it because mm-hmm. he's almost kind of like taunting him. Oh, yeah, because, because he, he despises wants to be like his name. This big Voldemort yeah. guy, but yeah. he's like, no, you're a little bitch, Tom. Tom. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, he called you a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, nah. when he says it, I was like, that's kind of cool, man. Yeah, like, nah, that was nice. The way Harry starts to taunt him, I was he, like, he oh, became a man. He, he, he came, really he went did. from boy to a man. Like I said, the whole Harry Potter franchise is boyhood. The yeah. fantasy version. Of and the way it, let, let's say that let, let the way it ends. Nineteen years later, we see him at Hogwarts Express. We see him at oh, the nine and three fours. I cry every time. Yeah, um, it's fucking beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. Great. The makeup's cheesy as fuck, but it's beautiful. It's, it's so yeah. good. just wonderful. It's it just so shows good. that they they care about it. You like know? they grow up and they see their kids go off to Hogwarts. Come yeah, on, yeah, man! How nice. can you not it's cry? That's nice. Even I get chills, and I, 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 get I just chills. watch these movies. And the, the score is beautiful. By the, the score, by the way, obviously James Williams, uh, James Williams, John Williams, the score plays all throughout. But I think uh, Alexandra God. Duplass. Yes. yes, yeah, baby. His theme's pretty great too. Amazing, mm-hmm. amazing. Really, That's really what really good. got me into the later films, which the, the music just just mm-hmm. in, in, in gross it's so me. iconic, especially in Order of Phoenix. There's a certain score in that one, uh, a, a piece that that sticks out to me. Mm-hmm. That bum 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 bum. Yeah, bum, yeah. yeah. I know exactly what you're yeah. talking yeah, about. Yeah, that one's that that my favorite. That was during the training montage, right? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's my favorite piece. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say before we like wrap up the movies, uh, the one thing that does bug me is uh, not so much like it's the final act, like. I, I love things in Final Axe killing off characters. I mm-hmm. think it's it's definitely earned and warranted, especially when you've journeyed for so sure. long. Yeah. I just think some of the characters that are killed, they were just like, oh, they're dead. Oh, like Lupin. Remus. Lupin. Remus Tonks. Lupin. They're, yeah. Oh, they're dead. Yeah. Okay. Fred Weasley. Okay, whatever. He's one of the twins. But there's yeah. just there's. I some... thought he died. I thought he died. It was gonna die in Half Blood Prince. Remember oh, when, when he gets it, hit. Yeah. yeah. Or no, I think that was. I think that was uh, that George was... that got hit. Oh, in the you're air. right. You're it right. might have been George. Twins, I think got yeah, hit in the air, twins. and then Fred gets killed. But uh, obviously, like you know, I think that's how it is in the book, kind of too. Okay. As far as I, it's yeah. been a lot a minute since I. It was like you Deadly said, Hollow. I think it's warranted. I think it works. Yeah. Yeah. There's certain like, but even like uh, fucking what's his name? Um, Colin, the kid, the kid that takes the photos in Chamber of Secrets. That's right. Fucking dies too. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, because like the there's in the books like they, they're sneaking away the younger kids because it's like, yo, you, you guys don't know spells. Yeah. You, you got to go away. Go. Colin comes in. He's like, no, oh, I want to help you, Harry, and he ends up dying. It's like, oh my god, it breaks my heart. Dude, the chick, yeah. the chick who loved uh, fucking Ron. Gets I was killed. gonna say mm-hmm. that's yeah. a little girl, man. I felt it's so eaten. bad. She's yeah. like, she's like seventeen, and yeah. I was like, that's kind of messed up. Crab and or Goyle, one of the two, they yeah. get they get killed too. Oh, yeah. The other guy in real life uh, went to prison, I think. You know who's the unsung hero of this movie? Freaking Warwick Davis, man. As, oh, yeah. As Grip Hook yeah. and, and uh, yeah. Flitwick. Flitwick. Yeah. Flitwick? Yeah. What, the freaking conductor of the yeah. of the choir. Yeah. Which no, is that's, great, That's too. pretty cool. That's, that's not in the book. I think that's, that's Karan cool. being fucking weird. That's yeah. just cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he's the unsung hero, too. I, yeah. I don't know. I just overall think this movie is pretty amazing. I think it's the whole great. franchise just... Yeah. It's the perfect conclusion to the, the franchise. This it and is. Breaking Bad, two best, best endings. One of the best Ooh, endings. 100%. Dude. Now, see, here's the thing. Avatar The Last Airbender. I'll, I'll leave it there. That's another... No. The show is great. The show, the ending for that show... Okay. All right. I haven't watched Corey yet. But. The Leftover oh, Season 3. Great. Beautiful ending. Uh, uh, um, I, I disagree with that one. Ooh. I disagree with you. Oh. <laughs> fight on. No, I'm kidding. Fight. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. It's fight on. Yeah, there. Uh, now, here's the, I'll put this question out there. Yes. Okay. I know we're in Fantastic Beasts right now. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. J.K. Rollins doing mm-hmm. all that shit. Mm-hmm. I know she's got The Cursed Child, which she didn't write. She mm-hmm. came up with a story for it, and then two other peeps wrote it. Fine. Whatever. It's fan fiction. doesn't mm-hmm. count for me. It's not canon. Do you think... She's got, I think she's got something in the in her back pocket. You think she's got like, not a revival series, but like a continuation 
No. You don't think it's back there? The, the reason why no is because of what I just saw with the Crimson Grindelwald. Okay. It's all it, this movie's I I she's trying to do the same thing she did with the Harry Potter films. Mm. It's so much build up. Yeah. Like I I, I finally got it when I was watching Graham's Crimes of Grindelwald because I was like, wait a minute, eventually we're gonna see Albus and Grindelwald fight, right? Or kiss. Or, or both, <laughs> that but at was... the same time, I was like, they're gonna fight, yeah. and it's gonna be like the sixth movie. Even the blood pack thing, yeah. I was like, are we doing the Horcrux thing? Oh, again? I thought they were just doing. Are they just? I thought they were just doing a trilogy for the Fantastic. No. Oh, there is, they got five plans. Five, 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 five. homie, five. five. <laughs> I, I told you, yeah. yeah. So I feel like Fantastic and Beasts so and where are we going with up, this? Man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's so yeah. much build up. I and it was... worked with Harry Potter, but for yeah, this, yeah. I feel like. Uh, I it's going to be, be two one, two, and three. But see, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, like you don't think she's got a, a, another trilogy of books in I, her back I think pocket? she's so occupied with Fantastic Beasts and true. building this movie and probably saving these movies, to be honest, man. Because cause it's going to... I, I, I just, don't know. She wrote the screenplay for this, and it's just like... I was going to say, I think it's going to... I think you're going to have a huge drop-off this weekend for box yeah. office. And I think it's going to be the kind of drop-off that Warner Brothers yeah. is like... Mm, what I don't know. Hey, JK, yeah. can we have a meeting? Well, like, yeah, I, I would say... You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta also consider they make billions off of these toys. They, <laughs> they're not yeah, just gonna toss true. this franchise. In I'm the not trash, saying they're like. gonna toss it, but I'm saying they're gonna do kind of like, hey, do you do you, do you have like what's your plan for this? Mm-hmm. Like, is it gonna be good? Because uh, I I don't know, man. This this movie is gonna be dragged out. Like I was thinking about the way they build up like the world World War Two type stuff. I was like, we're was we're gonna see. Fuck. It was dark. Yeah, but I, I like was that like, scene. Yeah, I like that scene too. But I was like, we're gonna see World War Two, mm-hmm. and we're gonna see like it's gonna be like, are we gonna go, go into the that. Cold War? Yeah, <laughs> too? Yeah, that, like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. is this gonna be like <laughs> yeah. five movies, man? Like yeah. yeah what's the what's the ending? Uh, what's what, the ending? What's it gonna lead up to? Is it gonna lead up to? Uh, uh, the, the gonna, is James with, and Lily gonna be in James it at some Lily. point? Like I don't want to oh, see man. that. Like, keep it, keep it. It's are we gonna thing. see Little Tom too? Yeah, because Tom, Tom doesn't die. What's up? Grindelwald doesn't die. He doesn't die. I mean, no. he he. I don't know if I think Voldemort kills him in in the last one, but Does or he he confronts him asking he confronts where the, him, where the elder one. I don't, yeah, maybe he doesn't. No, but uh, but yeah, because, yeah, because we didn't even. We, we don't even need to talk about Grindelwald in, in the Harry Potter one. He's so small in the movie and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't it, know. It's just well, I, I'm curious. Where is this franchise? I going? think I think I think in 30 years they're gonna come back. They're gonna make a Harry Potter episode nine. <laughs> with the like older a, Harry like Potter, a, yeah, and like it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna be the same Star Wars shit that we've been seeing like every franchise do. Like, <laughs> well, I think that's well, only that's kind of what they're doing with Fantastic Beasts, man. Yeah. I mean, but, the, but you, with her involvement, that's what I'm yeah. saying with the J.K. Rowling, George Lucas type thing. No, mm. I think this is the prequel. I think that we're going. Well, that's the prequel what I'm saying. That's Wars. this is the prequel. I'm telling you, thirty years. Give from it a now. few years. Give yeah, it a few years. Thirty, 30 years from now. You think they'll reboot it? You'll see. The son of Force Awakens of Harry Potter. What is his name? Albus Severus Potter. Oh, We're yeah, gonna yeah, see the I'm Albert right. Severus Potter trilogy, and then, yeah. uh, well, also, we've already got the cursed. So. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean and, that. Yeah, that, that's probably what they're gonna end up adapting. Is is that like in thirty years? Um, which I think. I think. I don't know, man. I, 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 I kind of wouldn't mind though. <laughs> really? <laughs> like I, I wouldn't mind. I don't yeah, know. I, don't I won't know. read it. But if I'm like, if me and my lady are like in New York, I'm like, oh, maybe we'll go see the play. Yeah, 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 yeah that'd be yeah, kind of yeah. cool. You know, I don't care for plays, but if it's Harry Potter, sure, why not? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I think. I've talked about this before, like, you know, I don't know J.K. Rowling. I haven't, like, actually read the screenplay for uh, Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts Beast or anything. But right. uh, I do know that there is a huge difference than writing a novel and writing a screenplay oh, from yeah. experience. And plus, <laughs> plus too much power. Too much power. Because I'm going to say, she had a, a big hand in these Harry Potter movies, but yeah. not as much as in the Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beasts, it's all her. Yeah, it's all like, her. It's almost like she's... You know, she like, wrote the screenplay. Like, let her be involved. Like, yeah. I love Stephen King, but I don't want him writing the screenplays. Yeah. Like, he's a fantastic writer as far as a novel goes. But then it's just, you know, there, there's a big... Everything in novels is in your head. It's all imaginative. Sure. Whereas you're painting, you're painting that picture it physically to come to life on the screenplay, and it's so much different. You're not inside the characters' heads. You're not inside, and it might be she just maybe she's just so wrapped up in this bubble, like she knows everything so much that she needs that outside perspective. Like, okay, but these people don't know that. They don't know this world like yeah. you do, which is perfect for her to be a consultant on, but, you know, have someone to yeah. go in, write the screenplay. It felt like the messy parts were her. J.K. Rowling, the Lestrange parts felt messy, well, and I felt like, G- that's the J.K. Timeline. Like, I mean, the timeline. Yeah, I don't know the, exactly the, what The doing. Dumbledore stuff with, with Credence, I was like, yeah. come on, J.K., like, I know you want to push this, but, oh. Yeah. yeah. 
It felt a little much. I mean, I, I, I'm curious where it's gonna go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, I think that's, I think, I, I mean, of, of course they're having the big hand. I think also just adaptation in general, like the whole idea of like of a novel being a novel and yes. a book being a book, mm-hmm. a, a novel being a novel, book being a book, movie being a movie. The movie, if you're taking it from a book or a novel, like the whole idea is that you need to take the essential elements, right? right. Like, whereas I feel like a lot of Fantastic B so far has been the non-essentials. That right. could have, yeah. Like I think if you if you're telling me that there's five, wow, five. five yeah. Like to me, like off of off of a a fictional textbook that she wrote, based in the Harry Potter universe. What that's basically where to find him is supposed to be a textbook by Newt Scamander. And in these movies, he's saying, I'm writing a book. So it's like they're not actually based off of anything. This is stuff that she's coming so up with. Yeah, that makes well, that's it what I'm, worse. That's what I'm saying. Like, if, if there's going to be five, like, these first two movies could have easily been condensed into one if you just cut out all the bad shit, you know? Yeah. But mm. I don't know. That's it, just. It's, it's a lot. It, yeah. It's just a lot. I, I don't know. I felt like that was the biggest. I, I like. I actually kind of enjoyed Crimes and Grindelwald. But at the same time, I yeah. did notice, like, man. This it movie, could be I bet better. you. I bet you this movie was like a three-hour cut too, because mm. it felt like they, they. There were some moments where I'm like, it, this dragged out, and then they had moments where it was like so cut and yeah. so quick. Yeah, they broke the 180 line like four yeah. times. Not that Absolutely. I was counting. Absolutely, you were no. They fucking counting. They, <laughs> they really fucking did. Film student, you. Know? <laughs> I follow I, the rule. I, I, follow I caught it. that too, though, man. Yeah. And I was like, that's how many times cool. do you do that in flick ticks? Huh? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm gonna go fucking watch it right now. How many times you break the 180? It's probably at least 18. I can tell you that right now. It's probably at least 18. The best filmmakers do it. (laughs) All right. uh, Real quick, uh, going around, favorite character. Oh, shit. Starting with... Uh, Mr. Well, Robert. I, well, I only know like five Robert characters. Robert from House Gryffindor. <laughs> Do you want me to say Your one of five favorite characters? Character. Can I just say Harry Potter? That's top top three characters, real quick. Because <laughs> we're two hours into this podcast, oh, fuck. and I, I'm tired. <laughs> dude, I have no idea. I don't know who's the character in this. I, I, I'm just I'm gonna say Harry. I'm gonna say Luna. Oh. and I'm gonna say uh, who's 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 Robert Pattinson. Cedric. Uh, Cedric. Cedric, I'm gonna say him. He has two lines in the movie, Robert. Robert. Yeah. <laughs> two lines in the movie, Robert. Uh, Lupin. Lupin. I love. And Lupin. what's your house again? How, uh, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Yeah. Oh fuck! Wait, can I go back and say nope. Sirius Black instead? Oh, yeah. no. you can't. oh, it's over. Sorry. No, I'm kidding. You can't. Sirius, Sirius Black. Black. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's my favorite one. He, I have his wand. So I'm gonna uh, say Lupin. Yeah. I'm Lupin's say dark as fuck. Hermione, Snape, mm-hmm. and oh fuck, Dumbledore. Oh, we're doing three. Fuck it. I'm doing Lupin. I'm doing McGonagall, and then I'll do Ron. Nice. Oh, Ron. Mm-hmm. Favorite okay. uh, favorite spell or line? Uh, oh, I have a line. Jeez. I'm spell. Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus is great. That's all mm. I know. What's the uh, Specto Patronum? Specto Patronum is dope. What's the uh, the freezing one? Stupefy. It's not stupefy. Stupefy is the stun. What about the what, what's the wand where you you you, you get the wand back? Expelliarmus. Uh, maybe it is that. Uh, Expelliarmus it, is, no, is disarm. No. I think disarm. Yeah. Opening, I could I could take uh, I could take the Guardian Leviosa is floating. What's the uh, oh, opening? Guardian locks? Leviosa. Loomis. Alohomora. Oh, Aloha that's a good Aloha one. Mor- Aloha yeah. moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine is still from Voldemort, and no, no one said it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with that, guys, that concludes our Booyah. podcast on the hey. Harry Potter franchise, Fantastic Beasts franchise. Hopefully, you guys listen all the way through. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys are Potter hits like that Mr. Copser, and hopefully, you, you guys are fake fans like me and RB3. No, I'm kidding. Fake fans now. <laughs> Recent converts, recent fans. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this conversation. Leave us in the comments down below. What is your favorite line? What's your favorite Harry Potter quotes? Let's give a round of applause to Copster for give a round no, of applause to no, Copster. I'm gonna get yelled at for getting name drawing and stuff. <laughs> Yell at us at the comment section. We'll yeah. be reading that next week on our episode. We appreciate you guys listening all the way through. And for the meaning of podcast, I'm Ace. This is RB3. And this was Copster. Thank you Hi. so much for coming in once again, man. Thank you guys. Thank you, my bloods. Yep. Hey. We are peacing out. Peace out, guys. Deuces.